All right, guys. Uh, welcome to the GPZ decklist stream. Uh, we didn't have a decklist stream uh, last month, so hopefully this will make up for it. Wow. Yeah. So uh, let's look at who's here. Uh, hello, I'm Gao. It's good to be back. Uh, let's see. <laughs> oh yeah, and if the which... volume is down uh, off, then please tell us because I I can't tell if the volumes are too low or not. I'm from Ricky's most controversial videos, maybe. <laughs> that depends. I'm Test, also known as AJSO. I was the one who put together the deck that won last month's GP, and maybe it'll happen again. Yeah. So, uh, oh, we got a lot more people right now. Like, this we is... do, but it seems as though many are non-participants. Um, well, I'm just chilling. Yeah, let's let's just start. Um, if you're not in the stream, maybe you could just watch it. It's, yeah, you could you could just watch oh, the stream. Okay, in the, so in the rest the of the community is not here. <laughs> there uh, right. call him. I, my mic wasn't set up. I was plugging in my mic. Mm. Well, mm. welcome. Oh. Well, anyways, uh, if well, you're in the stream, then please uh, click the link to the spreadsheet and add your own name. Okay. Anyways, so let's stop that diddly dallying around and well, actually, no, we should talk about the new set. So. This is the first uh, GP after two new sets, actually. Yeah, um, after uh, the two new sets, which is yeah, the stage presents the never-ending act and uh, MSL what magic uh, MSEM Legends um, the wild which cards, is, uh, which is a wild card set. It is also um, MSL only has uh, a very low amount of new cards, but it's they are ninety six actually. Impactful. Yeah, a like, number of them were bonus sheet reprints of sets from other formats. Uh, submissions to MSCM Survivor, as well as a couple of, as usual, the bonus sheet also contains cards from sets that didn't quite make it in this year. Yeah. I, I will say, uh, because of the way these kinds of sets release, I didn't manage to get out a bruise article with it, but holy shit are some of these cards impactful. Uh, you'll be seeing. Uh, and obviously, I sort of, the elephant in the room is that... Uh, me, Water the Weeds, and True Q got Toka nerfed pre-GP, but be besides that, many of these cards are also exceptionally impactful, um, and I will be displaying over the, the next sort of while. All right, so let's actually just get into the decks. So first of all, first up, uh, we got Splash Cat on um, Big... Wait, what, what is this sorted by? Because this is not alphabetical order, right? It's, it's not. by the order of submission. Splash Cat was the first to submit. Oh. Well... It was like um, that last time, too. Okay, I... that's fine. Yeah. Well, um, sure. So let's start with Splash Cat's deck then. Um, it's big red. It's it, this seems like a standard list uh, as far as the post as the lists that are not on Fireweaver um, are. Uh, yeah. I think the the big change is, if any, is careless violence on the sideboard, which I'm not sure I've seen since Weaver. I think um, some. Well, right. I have I've only seen this card in Weaver sideboards. She was saying something about how she needed to fix the deck. Um, Splash Cat was tearing up League for a couple of runs with variations of Big Red. She had tried out Dragons, but said that it just seemed like a worse version of Big Red. So this Which is I good. mostly agree with, actually. I think the we'll big difference is, is print. Uh, later down. Um, but um, I, think, I think overall Big Red is a stronger deck, I think. Ultimately, the extra copies of Emissary don't do as much as I would like them to uh, compared to the just higher overall card, card quality. Um, but uh, yeah, standard list, 22 lands, which is lower than usual, I think, but mostly just standard. Uh, I'd say solid 7.5 or 8. Yeah, This appears to be optimized to hit three drops. That's usually what you want the 22 lands for. Yeah. I yeah. Mean, well, you also have the ritual guy, the leaf down sizzle mage. Yeah, you you also have seven more mana sources to get you to Tunu. It's fine. Um, it's just I I think I'm just used to twenty three, but I could be wrong. Yeah, um, uh... I I don't play this archetype. I'm I'm not that sort of into the nitty gritty of it. I'll give it three chili peppers because I mean big reds always always interesting to watch. Um, I if I'm going to do a a spiciness rating, I think I'll. I have to do one because of how much of an established archetype this is and how much of a sort of standard okay, list fine. this is. Uh, yeah. but this is from my perspective as, as a sort of a brewer. Uh, next, add yourself to the spreadsheet. Mm. Or no, we not in a test, I meant. I, like I said, I can't find it. Oh, did I not link it to... Uh... All right. I don't remember no. seeing a link. Test, 
that's just there. Or okay. did one of the other people okay. that? I have to. Have to... Uh, yeah, that is uh, Big Red. Yeah. It's Big Red. It's Big Red. Uh, it's Big Red. Let's move on. Now, this next deck, I actually have quite a bit to say about. This is a Pipsqueak original. Uh, it is Jund Gerald. Um, Gerald, fugitive. Can you explain to us uh, what this card does? Uh, when it enters the battlefield or any other creature, um, you can target an instant or sorcery in your graveyard and then cast it for free by paying life equal to its mana value. This card is... It, it, oh, it's a 2-3 with lifelink for uh, Jund. And it, it, this card's fucking incredible. This card is just an incredible, incredible newcomer. Um, just coming hot off of, of uh, Act, uh, of the never-ending Act. This card I've seen is, it is not her list. Uh, yeah. Not Pip's list, that is. Is it not? Um, Pip had pushed some oh. uh, Gerald lists, but I believe a Scribble constructed this by themselves. Well, uh, I mean, good looking out, uh, good to remember. Uh, I am noticing, actually, that the Sophia is not in the main deck, which it was with uh, Pip, um, because Sophia and Gerald is just such a, a strong interaction. Uh, but I think, honestly, this is just... Mid, this is just sort of low synergy mid range, which we haven't seen in a hot minute in MSCM. Um, this, or, no, that's not true. Oh, well, um, we know how it is. With Jund. Mono black and big red, but you know, this is Jund. We're Junding. Uh, we've got BJP and Gerald as sort of win conditions with the capital W and C, uh, but we also have Earbeck uh, and Valerie tokens to close games out. Valerie yeah. is a condition all on her, all on her own. Yeah, and we like. That we have Kalyan, who is actually going to see a significant amount of action as the backside of Maru's Horde. Thanks to Gerald, I think Kalyan is significantly stronger in the context of a deck containing Gerald. Um, yeah, it triggers off everything. It triggers off of whatever you want. Uh, yeah, I think this deck is strong. I think this deck is decently positioned. I, I would maybe worry about this deck's ability to answer uh Kaylin Horland, uh among other things. He has Rod uh, in the board. Uh oh, is there? Uh, yes. Oh yes. Uh, and it's tutorable off of the councils. Okay. No, that's fine then. Um mm. uh yeah. No. Yeah. Then... I'll give it four chili peppers. It seems very interesting. I'd say a, a solid seven. Um and I'd give it a, a, a another solid four chilies. Um yeah. Great Jund. Big fan of Jund. Yeah, Jund them out, <laughs> except this time you actually get to do some flashbacky get... things. They so, actually go out. Um, <laughs> next, we have a Fireweaver deck. Yeah. Uh, oh, okay. hey. So this is <laughs> hmm. this is Fireweaver eight sack. Um, I see you finally got deck, a chance to play it. Uh, this deck is incredible. Um, I, I I do truly believe. Uh, so the only new cards in it are Scion of Silence in the main as a, a card I will never play again. But it's a tech answer that we can fetch for Kalen. Um, that can also sort of answer some other key threats. Uh, and we're playing it over Olten Surveyor. Um, and Tiger of the Drums out of the sideboard uh, as a way to side out five drops that are bad in the matchup um, and replace them with a five drop that is extremely good basically whenever, as long as you can pay two mana for it. Um, <laughs> with that being said, uh, if the basic conceit of this deck is foreign to you, uh, I invite you to read what lurks beyond and selective breeding, and I think the the rest will fill in. Oh itself. no! You also have to show them what the flashback creatures do. Yes, uh, selective breeding, what lurks beyond, and then fiery truth seeker and Kaioro grave betrayer are all uh, sort of the bones of this deck. Um, I might uh, again because what lurks beyond can fetch from graveyard. I've been thinking maybe I will cut down one Kaioro, one truth seeker. But the second Kyoro and the second Truth Seeker have been good in enough time good enough times that I'm holding off on that change for the moment. Uh, beyond that, this deck's sort of main win condition is Kyoro enabling you to just sort of churn out a constant stream of five, four, and six drops um, that kill your opponent. Uh, oh yeah, you also have to mention Pessive Songwriter. That's another thing uh, that lets it turbo on turn three, right? Yes. Uh, yes. You can you can this this deck has no combo, uh, but in exchange you can just sort of answer anything in the game essentially. Um, even even more so with Scion of Silence, you can just sort of an, you can answer any permanent 
type within reason. Uh, you can kind of you can toolbox into other toolboxes by potting into a fireweaver, um, and you can toolbox into other toolboxes by fireweavering into a chaos is your redemption or a Tali's council. Yep, I mean it's a very Yu-Gi-Oh like deck. It, yeah, it, know, you do get to play Yu-Gi-Oh, and it's very difficult because Yu-Gi-Oh is exceptionally difficult. Um, I like how we used the term extender while we were discussing this deck. We did, we did. Um, anyway, anyway uh, yeah. I think it should come as no surprise that I have crafted this deck, considering that uh, my favorite archetype in, in Yu-Gi-Oh history is Tier Element. Uh, and this joke is only funny to a small subset uh -huh. of the, the audience, uh -huh. but um, I'm, I'm, I'm dead serious about that. Uh, anyway. Yeah. And anyway, it's five chili peppers because this is eight sack. I love eight And for the same reason, I would have to rate it to zero if I were doing ratings at all. Uh, wait, who else w was talking? Oh, me. I was saying I love getting my butt kicked by eight sack. I know, right? <laughs> Especially if I'm the one doing it. Yeah. I don't know. I swear, I, I played against is. only you in League as I resubmitted and then just got my butt kicked by eight sack when I was starting. <laughs> mm. <laughs> like three times. I think this deck is powerful. Um, I think it has a few matchups that it just cannot get over, um, but many matchups that just cannot get over it. Um, yeah. So and... let's move on to Nyx, yeah. who is not playing Kaylin, despite having Kaylin in the deck name. I was going to be a. Uh, I said... thought about it a lot. It was this or Kaylin. It's like this is my one opportunity to play Kaylin before it gets nerfed to the ground. Even though I don't. I should probably show what yeah. Kaylin does for the people at home. Anyway, uh, uh, I am playing uh, Burn. Uh, does that beat Kaylin? No. Specifically, yeah. This I is mean, the modification beat... of last month's winning Burn. Yeah. The modifications it's... in this case are: we took out the four she who's commands because. They're nerfed to the ground now. Uh, we put in one extra land to make things just a bit more consistent after some observations last month. And we now have three Bright Flame Phoenixes because they have an average damage output comparable to Brazen Sacrilege. And uh, uh, it doesn't beat Kaelin? You know what sucks? It beats Kaelin by virtue of being able to kill on turn four most of the time. And Kaelin... If Kaelin is in the draw, Kaelin just dies. I played... Yes, it also I was in play testing against Kaelin. I mean, I was playing a ton of like games with Rec in the private, just trying to figure out like how to play this matchup. And just after sideboards, it's just very difficult for Burn. That's yeah. Burn in general. It really depends on how much people sideboard yeah. against it. The uh, modification uh, is you have included a flaming point technique. We discussed that in private over how to modify the deck for the coming meta. Yeah. And yeah. also, uh, I can't play Rec when that in Guiding Light to a sideboard after learning I was playing Burn. <laughs> well, so, so actually, I want to say, so you know how Shihol's command got nerfed? You know, pre nerf Shihol's command would have been great against Kaelin, right? Because it makes them sack <laughs> yeah, not legendary. Yeah. This is true. And the now, here is targets. Like... It targets the yeah. creature, so now Kaelin is immune to it. Maybe if we can, like, get them to change Shihol's command again so that the fourth mode doesn't target. <laughs> Oh, sure, sure. Let's go yeah. back to the days of uh, three damage plus two cards drawn, plus an edict, <laughs> plus L, plus your control it's, player. Yeah, I, I understand the nerf. Um, the, yeah, I'm just yeah. hoping here that I get to be faster than everyone else pulling their shenanigans. Well, that was part of the discussion. I and a couple of people got together and we talked to Dover. We concluded that this month was going to be full of greed, just greed as far as the eye can see. So there will be a few decks here from the people that I spoke to that are out to get these greed wagons. They are out to punish people whose game plans start only on turn four, and Burn is one of those. So what 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 I'll happens if the others as we as we get to them? So what happens if your predictions are wrong, and then everyone's playing these anti greed decks? Uh, <laughs> then maybe we'll have an interesting VP. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um. All right. Well, I mean, Burn is just also good. Like, it's I don't good. Think, it's decent. Yeah. I don't think you need to be against a bunch of greedy decks for burn. It doesn't necessarily. But it's funnier uh, when you kill someone on turn four before they've done anything of note. It also makes you I think know. less while playing the GP, which is like a great bonus. <laughs> yeah, no. it, it makes the matches faster, agree. which is great for commentary. I do not agree. Yeah. Exactly. I do not yeah, agree yeah. at all. I get a ruined. <laughs> I get a ruined this, Ricky's commentary. This specific <laughs> version of burn fast. does require a bit of uh, thinking ahead with regard to. Uh, how you're going to sequence your cards. Because if you mess up the timing on a Brazen Sacrilege and you have no targets for it, 
or if you mess up the sequence on a bright flame, it's real embarrassing. Bye. Like, it's you're fine. trying to squeeze every card for what it's worth. So yeah. please do me a favor and think while you're playing the deck. Practice uh. a bit. Because if you miss lethal, <laughs> especially if you're on commentary. By thinking. <laughs> it's fine. I'll just yeah. miss all my triggers. Nix, if you're on commentary <laughs> with and Nix is also commentating, uh or I mean uh test. If you're commentating Nix's game, uh, will you like uh... Oh, I'm gonna get flamed. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Right flamed, you mean. Almost fl oh, yeah. blew a gasket that one time Marina kept a hand with one land. <laughs> All right. All right. Uh, so, since it's burn, two chili peppers, and let's move on. Uh, unless anyone else has anything else to say. Land burn one. That we was, have... like, only keep one land hands. And they we work have... out sometimes, but, you know, that's different. Yeah. We have a, we have a Kaelin list. It is just the standard Kaelin list, actually. Um, cool time for me yeah. to come up. Guess how he got that? I mean, guess how Requiem got that list. <laughs> I mean, does sure is someone have a soundboard open or something, or is it some? Just... And it's uh, it's still running Alton Surveyor. Mm. Well, I mean, Alton Surveyor is fine. Does lots of things. Okay, it's running four celestial banishments in the sideboard against. Uh, yeah, that's to kill Kalens. <laughs> yeah, mm. you know something else. Something that I did notice with this Kalen deck is that. You can get five colors really easily, so I'm surprised that this oh. deck isn't like these sorts of decks aren't splashing more for stuff because the mana is really to good, splash, right? Uh, Flare Blitz, but Flare Blitz just isn't good enough of a card. Is there okay. like random red or black cards that this deck really wants to splash for that these decks aren't splashing for uh, that they should? No. One mana equipment that discards, but otherwise not really. Yeah, but I guess Celestial Banishment from sideboard is a good black splash just against the mirror. Yeah. Um. Well. Yeah. Well, yeah. Can, can you uh, I think this. Yeah. I think if I were to sort of evaluate this deck, I think this is a de a strong deck of a high power level that is elevated to a fucked up deck by um, blossoming expanse and uh, by you know the the elephant in the room judge's decree. Uh, yeah. Can you explain how the interaction works? Uh, you cast judge's decree. Both triggers go go on the stack. Or you you can't no. You, one trigger goes on the stack. I'm sorry. Uh, you activate the ability of Kaelin uh, before the first trigger resolves, and then the second trigger will just r resolve harmlessly, uh, and then the first yep. trigger will exile something permanently. Yep. So you got a hard lock, sort of. You get a counter a spell every single turn. Or exile a permanent if your opponent decides yep. to hold their spells. Yep. Yeah. And besides that, uh, just to mention the interaction again, well, Blossoming Expanse is a land that lets you play another basic when you play it, but it doesn't make mana by itself. But if you enchant it with either arrive surrounded by petals or unexplored regions, or you have, or, uh, where is that? Uh, terraformers. terraformers. Yeah, then or it's... Or you bounce it with a rail line, then you can go mana positive. <laughs> yeah, so, and then you also have Kaelin to bounce your stuff and get value off that. So yeah, a really powerful deck that can get through a lot of cards and also has the ability to ramp and also has the ability to hard lock in the late game. Yep. Yep. And it's running three Guiding Lights on the board just because, uh, from what you, I've heard, uh, it's against Burn, Has right? Burn won last month. Nah. <laughs> uh, that's a good enough excuse. Not accusing of, you of scouting or anything, right? Uh, okay. Yeah, I anti-scouted myself, I know. Uh, actually, can someone else fill in the spreadsheet with the players' and decks, or the player names and whatever? So, I'll okay. be right back. My opponent wants to play round one. Ooh. Are you going to commentate yourself? Yeah, I suppose. Yeah, let's do that. Or, All right. You can do that. Oh my god. Bye. Nick's just serious. You, you gave them the list that boarded against you. Yeah. Oh my god. All right, so unless we have anything else to say, let's move on to Draw Knight's deck. And what's Draw Knight even on? Not good. Draw Knight. Draw Knight. They've got an Adam as their first mate. It's, it's um... full time mid range Throg Tribal. It's mostly focused <laughs> also on tempo, from what I can see. It's got Cursory Glance. It's got Megadonis. Now, I'm not going to rate this. Um, I'm not going to rate this, but it's funny. Um, I don't like making good decks, so... Um, what's, it could be a good deck. What's Luminescent Croker doing this deck? Why, why are they playing I, a draft I mean, common? I needed more frogs. <laughs> That fair enough. That's a fair. But is there really no, nothing no, better no. than a draft common? 
Yes, <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> it's a frog. Do you not know? It's a frog. It's a frog. I wanted frog another tribal. two dropper. I wanted uh -huh. another. Unrelated. I'm going to look up who you're up against in round one. Sure. So, what frog synergies uh, do you actually have? Rhinidophobia. <laughs> one one drop makes a one one frog, and then it it's a curse, and then the enchanted player can't block frogs. All my creatures are unblockable if I play this on turn one. And then sure. it's just mid range. Sure. Sure. I love playing and my one Adam. Adam. Let him cook. You have Adam sometimes. I'm cooking. I'm cooking. I'm in the kitchen. I mean, all of your creatures being unblockable is like pretty good, but uh. Yeah, but look at the creatures. Yeah. <laughs> it's oozing Yagu or Yagawi. Yagwai. No, Yagwai. I don't. Damn. I'm kicking myself for not playing um, retroactively for not playing what celestial banishment because I looked at it, um, but I don't like look at the meta or look at anything when I'm building my decks. So um, I don't know. Nothing I could have done about that other than I don't know. Try to make a good deck. Uh, don't worry. Cursory yeah. glance is decent against Kalen because it counters Kalen, so you don't have to play celestial banishment. You know, I'll say that. I don't think your choice in a removal spell is going to be what holds you back from performing here. Um, well, I think I'm you'll be fine. To make the idea uh, as good as I can get it. It's a good and idea. That in, and the, well, that idea like includes four. That idea includes luminescent croaker. Is what I appreciate your do. commitment to the bit. What is uh -huh. This is what I do. This is what I've been doing since I joined the format. <laughs> you know what? I feel like I'll give this deck six chili peppers just because you're really honestly, cooking here. Honestly, um, you could win games. Like no, I, I I actually think this is not that bad. Cell type no, frogs. There is there is there is one like, there is one look, other kind of burn. Croaker isn't a good card, but <laughs> no, no. is actually like pretty good and. It has I, reasonable support. Like, I, I don't know. I think I you're think stretching reasonable. a lot of definitions by saying that, but... I think we should move on. Um. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. So we're up next on to Dead Souls. Not Dead Souls, exactly. Or it's... Um, it's, it's Shamans. It's, yeah, Dead Shamans. So, okay, so the, the interaction here is Ravik plus Hadak. Uh, wins the game forever in most situations. Basically, I, I only learned until recently yeah, that, that Doc is a shaman. I, I don't know why it's a shaman. Like, I don't think uh, the, the sets were designed lore. together. Well, yeah. Um, you just think dragons can't be shamans? It's just lore. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Um, I see. Okay. So, the way the deck works in sort of an extended TLDR is uh, Leyline Invoker is a shaman. Um, a Dragon's Eye Descendant is a Shaman. Surprisingly. Uh, and they, those form a coherent fair plan. Um, Chai Li is also a Shaman. Um, and then Ravik and Hadak are your win conditions. Uh, Ravik, on, uh, Ravik on her own is already a reasonable board control tool and a reasonable inevitability tool. Ravik and Hadak means your opponent cannot ever resolve a creature for the rest of eternity, and... They take four damage every time you breathe. Um, unless it's Kalen. Unless it's Kalen, in which case they, uh, they can still dies to... because this deck is seems to be uh, missing the inbuilt Shaman Kalen answer, which there is actually. What, what, um, what is, is it? There? Yes. Uh, the okay. So in the version of this deck that I I was building um, and that I was maybe considering playing in League, but definitely not for GP, just because I love my deck too much. Ill-Fated Seer uh, <laughs> is a three-mana shaman that you can fetch off of your tutors. No, you can't. Uh, just, you can fetch it off of selective breeding. Um, okay, close enough. Uh, and, you know, it edicts your opponent. Uh, it edicts your opponent, and also it deals, it deals burn damage in matchups where that's not relevant. Uh, I think Ill-Fated Seer is an incredible card. I ended up putting two of it, I think, in my final list, uh, because I think this card is incredible. I will um, say that edicts are not going to be good enough, like, a majority of the time against the Kaelin deck. Yeah, because they can make tokens really easily. They make a lot of tokens. Yes. Uh, that being said, I do think you should still play. <laughs> I think you should still yeah, play like, like, you, in you your deck. Yeah, like, you can maybe do it. And even if it's not answering Kalen, it is also answering creatures. I guess. 
there are a lot of hate creatures for this deck that sort of op that like don't fully hose you but operate but make you operate on weirder angles um and there are a lot of just very powerful must answery threats in the format right now like gerald as an example uh like performer as an example you know so i, I want to mention i feel like this deck is missing uh Let's call it again, Mortal Benediction. Like, Mortal Benediction is a card that is run in the original deck, Dead Souls deck. And I feel like this card would also be really good in a Shaman's deck because you can reanimate your three drops yeah, and also no. ramp up. And this deck actually wants to ramp way more than Dead Souls because you have these uh, selective breeding in Beckham of the Wilds. Uh, now, the, the list I was playing was not actually on Beckham of the Wild, but was rather on uh, an Unearth spell. I don't remember if it was Benediction or Unearth. Uh, with the logic that it sort of is more mana efficient but operates on a similar level of selection considering how much you can mill. Um, yeah. I feel like this deck is missing just unearth effects because... Uh, but I actually think the thing this deck is missing is mostly uh, that this deck is not leaning into the toolbox angle. That Sh Shaman has a significant amount of surprisingly relevant eight cards in type, uh, and I think that you could be taking more advantage of that um, to just sort of angle for more matchups. Yeah, right. Uh, I, I also think that you're playing a like graveyard centric deck, and your payoffs just aren't that. No, your payoffs are great. Your, your, I mean, payoffs, are your payoffs are good, but your payoffs are not like. And you you're you're you win lose... the game maybe on turn four. Uh, you can very much win the game on turn four in this deck. Uh, I also think this deck is less graveyard reliant than other graveyard decks out there. It is. That is fair. Uh, I think there are very rarely graveyard-related choke points, which there would be if you were playing an Earth, I will acknowledge. It's literally just Leyland um, Walker that cares about graveyard, or cares about stuff from and graveyard. And Dragon's Eye Descent, right? Yeah, but you're fine if Dragon's Eye Descent doesn't actually, or if your graveyard gets exiled when Dragon's Eye gets played, because you still get the fair. benefit. Yeah, you still, you still, you, yeah, it, it's, I think this deck could be better. Uh, I think it's currently about a 7. Um, I would give it a Solid four or five chili peppers, but I think it is. It has significant room to sort of improve. Yeah, I'll give it five chili peppers make, because it's, it's really cool. Yeah, to make it make better use, uh, make better use of its deck slots, etc. Um, kind of late, so I don't have a column. Okay, sure. Yeah. Um. All right. Uh, do you well, have you ever talked about your deck, or do you want us to jump your deck right now? Me? Uh. No, the person who's leaving. Oh. Yes. Uh, wait, what? What? Uh, wait, uh, sorry, I. I'm leaving. I'm not leaving. No, I was no. saying I came late. So I don't have ah, a, I see. I, I misheard. This, this is embarrassing. Doctor. And this is also on stream, <laughs> so I can't exactly edit it out. Cool. Yeah, well, <laughs> okay. You, uh, something, this is, this something, something. Google Sheets, how do I do this? Like, something, something, not your yeah, worst. Not uh, that. Uh, <laughs> recording gaff. Um. <laughs> Okay, but my previous gaff, I can actually edit out, okay? Of, yeah. There we no, go. I didn't. <laughs> I it here. What? Uh, sorry. Can you repeat that? Uh, I wasn't listening. Okay. Well, anyways, we should probably move on if nobody else is saying anything. We I... should. Um, yeah. So test. So the villainy. next up in the list is my deck, I believe. Mm -hmm. Test. So this was another one of the anti greed decks. This is Villainy. It's a somewhat non-standard version of Villainy. It does not run Xanagan or Urbeck for that matter. Uh, during some of the simulations that I ran to try and optimize the deck, it was found that five mana generally falls outside the curve of what you can afford. So instead, our win conditions are in addition to Villainy, Bell's Descent because Yogmoth's will is good. What Bow's Descent does is it's an ETB legendary enchantment. It's one of the out of back gods where it has an ETB, and then if you have enough swamps or whichever land type is relevant to the god, you can flip it for a reasonably low cost and get an insane backside. So Bow's Descent is a two sided edict like Exuant. Oh. When it comes down, it makes both players discard cards, but it doesn't really matter if you discard some of your own things because the backside is, again, a Yogg's Well. You can play stuff from your graveyard. Yeah. Uh, besides that, we're dipping into green for a few things. We're mostly doing it for Pithwilt because Abrupt Decay is one of the best cards ever printed in an environment. We're doing it for Whisperwoods Explorations because sometimes you lose your villainy and you'd like to get it back. You want to dig for your villainy, or you have a villainy and you want to spin your wheels with a Dark Bargain or a Miserable Discovery. 
Now, Miserable Discovery here is taking the slot of what would normally be Find Happiness in Misery, which is the uh, leitmotif black card that's sort of the black mirror to plan far, far away. It's just two draws for two. But comparing the mana efficiency on that card to uh, Miserable Discovery, which is a side grade of Dark Bargain, it seems somewhat worse, so we have cut it in favor of that. Additionally, Miserable Discovery can be found off of Whisperwood's Exploration, Find Happiness and Misery can't. In the sideboard, part of our anti-greed was to include Singularity's Grasp. As Sai noted in the deck building chat, many times a lot of the decks coming in are vulnerable to this. And just to be safe, we also included Rot. I see you've, you're you very teched up, teched out against the Kalen matchup. Yeah, uh, but in a way that I think is not intrusive. Um, I think if I had any notes... Um, I would say that I agree with your logic about Xanagan. I think Earbeck is a little more difficult to evaluate on that access since access since Earbeck is also a three mana spell. Uh, I don't think it's necessary, but I think it is a potentially relevant choice. I think this list looks solid overall. Um, although uh, I'm surprised there's no white in the mana base. I'm, I'm more why surprised that there's. Is it too difficult? No. Why? Why should there be white? Just for, tell me why there should, why should there be more, more more colors for wilt so that you can wilt things that. Well, oh, not, right. Wilt is not already white. white. Like, okay, so not, I'm I'm just okay. Never mind. I don't know. Okay. Wilt is don't, not don't, colors you've spent. It's colors you've cast. Don't, don't I, worry. I, I, thought, I, it, I, I thought, I, thought I, it was yeah. Different don't worry. I also no. made that mistake when I first saw the card. I thought it was like uh the augmented. Card. Yeah, I know. That's that's anyway, also what I thought. Um, if I if I had anything else to say, I would say. Um, the lack of Celestial Banishment is surprising. Um, I think Celestial Banishment is quite, quite a powerful spell uh, as far as counter magic goes. Counter magic that is compatible with tap out control like villainy. Um, and also is not loot. Yes, yeah, Celestial Banishment did come up in the considerations. In terms of functional density, though, it seemed better to absorb its slots into the hand attacks. Yeah, I agree. Like you, you want to be a tap out control deck, so like it's probably better to be proactive and then use rot and singularity's graphs to, to answer your the opponent's kalins. I can see that. Uh, although the best I, answer I, though, the absolute best answer is just hand attack them. Stuff like singularity's yeah, grasp it's just and, to take the kalin out of their hand. Uh, stuff like singularity's grasp and rot are for emergencies. It's for when your opponent has the play on you or. Your opponent manages to lock out your hand attacks, or they draw into a Kaelin. You really do not want to take chances, because if they draw into the Kaelin, there's nothing you can do, and at that point, what are you going to do? Just lose? Your best bet is to just keep filling the face until they die. Otherwise... It's actually, like, a pretty reasonable thing to be doing, unless they find Decree. Yeah. And that, the possibility of them establishing a lock is why we have the board wipes. And but in general, Kaelin is a board wipes don't do anything. In general, Kaelin is a Concord deck, so stuff it's like Rot just completely messes them oh, up. Oh yeah. yeah, I am not trying to say that it's not good against Kaelin. I'm just saying it's not an answer to Kaelin decree because they'll just decree the board wipe. Yeah, if you give them the turn to do it. Okay, so um, uh, let me just give. I'll give the deck. Uh, yes, three chili peppers because it's it's a villainy deck. It's villainy. Yeah. Like, I don't really yeah. like watching villainy decks. Uh, just, just, yes. I'm sorry if that comment may, may have offended people. I mean, it's but villainy. Yeah. That, yeah. Like, villainy is old news. Yeah. It's a staple. Yeah. Well, next up we have... Dr. Chobrain uh, on dragons. Okay, so uh, this, this is... is yeah. a better dragons lit, I will say, off the bat, as a compliment to whoever built this. Maybe it's, it is Chilbrain. Uh, this looks better than every other dragons list I've ever seen. Um... <laughs> There are no, there are no random shitty one-offs that you will never actually tutor, but theoretically could. Um, and your curve is actually significantly more reasoned. Um, with that said, I think this is still just worse than Big Red, and I think ultimately you can actually just play Prince of Stars in Big Red if you want to. Um, yeah, uh, actually, do you, do, you, do you want to tell the audience uh, what the I main? Don't know. Like, how many of these cards are cards you wouldn't play in Big Red anyway? Um, Ominous Dragon Caller and yeah. Pollet Pools and Dragon's Breath Throat Singer. I mean... Throat Singer, I think, is a bad card. Um, most of uh, the time. I don't know if I agree with that. Uh, well, I'd rather it's a worse card than what you could be playing in that spot, which is Raghavan. Raghavan. Um, or Daisy. 
I, Daisy, I think is better. Daisy is already in the deck, so it's not as much of a criticism as it would be otherwise. Yes, which yeah, which is why I only mentioned Ragavan by name. I also think Throat Singer is just clunkier than than um, a lot of the th- the other things that are good about this deck. I think. Uh, Aaron, I also think that this is Purple's build, by the way. Oh, it's uh, the purple. Uh, I mean, that's why it's good deck. instead of that's why it's good instead of playing um, seven one-off dragons. One offs. Um, <laughs> Because I'm surprised there's no uh, deck builds. Well, shots um, fired. Very, very well, famously. Um, Purple Murasaki can deck build. Um, who knew? <laughs> who knew the best deck builder in the format can deck build? Who knew the person that got into council because they were good at deck building can deck build? Exactly. I'm surprised um, there's no judgment of how ties. Uh, I think I, I remember reading a rationale about this. I think it may have been from Purple. But it's because that card is four mana. <laughs> I mean, yes. I don't know. I think it's because like you'd rather just try to beat them instead of trying to answer them, right? Like you're the yeah. you're the aggressor. You should just you're the you're the beat down. You're not the control. So no point in trying to run a board you're the board fight. Yeah, no big like big red is historically the beat down. You're um, you're the beat down against Kalen. You're the beat down against a lot of things. I, uh, I think without judgment. This deck just will not be Kalen. Like it's just not happening. Uh, it could go faster I than Kalen. I, I think you're like very small percent to win. Okay, how how is Kalen an- answering impressive stars on curve? You just judgment it out. Okay, or what you, you like you, you just decree it out. Okay, so that's their first decree. Like that's that's. I will remind okay. you. I will remind you that Prince of Stars Cascade is a cast trigger. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Beyond that, I also like, think that. Uh, this this deck has a actually significant game against most things. Um, I think the big thing you get from being dragons, besides uh, the first mate, is Prince of Stars. I think Prince of Stars is an incredible card, and I think Ominous Dragon Caller finding your emissary and your Prince of Stars is a powerful thing to do. I think thro- I think I dislike Throat Singer more than most people um, because I. I think that I think this card is just it just has not done what I wanted it to every time I've put it in a deck. I think it is it like it feels like a Daisy on the on the face of it, and then it isn't Daisy um, when you. I agree. It put it in your deck, although I do think I w- I will say of note uh, this deck is actually not playing any two drops that don't trigger um, Turret Singer, which is a, which is good, and you should do that. Uh, yeah. If you're if you're putting Throat Singer in your deck, every single two drop in your deck should trigger Throat Singer. Um, and you also, oh yeah, I also want to mention the three exhilarating presence in the sideboard because that's your plan against decks that want to go long. Yeah, yeah. this is true. Um, I mean, your your plan besides Prince of Stars uh, being an incredible way to go long. Um, yeah. yeah. But yes. Yeah, so um, five chili peppers because it's a purple deck. I. I'm giving it five. I'm giving it four chili peppers, but not because not exclusively because it is a purple deck, but because of the qualities that purple puts in a deck. If that makes sense. Well, yeah, that's what I mean. That's basically <laughs> what it's a purple deck is a shorthand for. Sure. Um, I, th- I I do think I, I'm giving this a seven point five. I would I was I was thinking like oh no eight, but I. I feel like it, it, oh, it is. Ultimately, have... I feel like I have to rate it similarly to Big Red, if that makes sense. I have to rate it adjacent to Big Red. Yeah. I think the decks are not different enough for me to meaningly rate one above another. Um, All right, so yeah. let's move on to the next deck. Who? So Crush Castles, on Mario Aristocrats with uh, with the Nalistic okay. Shock Trooper. So there, Eli keeps showing up in these lists, and I'm always like, why or why do we ever want to play Eli in these lists? I, I guess it technically makes like artifacts. Now, it makes artifacts that sacrifice themselves. <laughs> okay, you know I would rather do with what the deck is. I would rather play more good cards that do that instead of playing Eli Windsor's Lone Gun. All like right, Dawson. Uh, so being serious for a second here, uh, MacGuffin. McGuffin was a big fan of Aristocrats back when it was, well, meta, and before there was too much interaction against it, like Metal Munch. Um, towards the end of playing that general archetype, McGuffin started to pivot more into an artifact style. But the artifact variant Aristocrats that McGuffin played was not this. This is something different. Yeah. Um, and in my that, opinion, this that... is something that is 
way worse than McGuffin's yes. artifact-based aristocrats. I think there are a couple cards in this list that I have a fairly strong distaste for. I think one of them is Eli Windsor's. I don't think you should ever put this card in your MSCM deck. Uh, unless, this. unless unless they print a two-drop that says, when a bullet deals damage to your opponent, you win the game. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Huge. <laughs> um, I, and, and until until the day we see that happen, well, you control a player death touch. Exactly. <laughs> well, until if that, that happens, well, no, then, it, I, then I, if I'm that, comfortable saying that I'm never put. I I don't think you should ever put Eli Windsor's in your deck. If if that um, happens, then you should put Marion in your deck instead because that's a two drop that, that makes it bullet. There yeah, is something else. Untapped. There is something else. One thing that this deck does that I don't believe I saw in any of McGuffin's decks do is. It's specifically trying to build around Dawson's Collector, and what Dawson's Collector does is when you sacrifice your third thing, each opponent sacrifices something, which I think you still. Nice, I think you actually would want Lich more than that in this in that kind of deck because, yes. uh, and there is no Lich and there is no Channeler, which is perplexing to me. Weird, yeah. It's deeply, deeply perplexing. I don't know why you would ever want to also, play. They're just like not sack outlets. Yeah, that's another thing, like, is that there are not sack outlets. <laughs> they're just straight up are not, right? Am I missing something? Dawson's Collector no, lets you no, sack on a pack. There's no Tomnol, there's no Imp Den. But there there is in the entire deck, there. there just are not sack outlets. Yeah. No, they are not sack outlets. Oh, you well, are... I, guess, I guess Collector. I against this deck. Collector attack trigger. Dawson is technically a sack outlet. Isn't when it? I had played against this Didn't deck, it was mostly it. relying on Dawson's trigger. Uh, both Dawson's, by the way. It was relying on Dawson's Collector's attack trigger. It was relying on Lord Rickard Dawson's loyalty abilities, and it was relying on the fact that a lot of artifact tokens... Uh, yes, Crush played this last GP, Herver. Yeah. Um, and it was mostly relying on the fact that a lot of artifact tokens sacrificed themselves. Uh, that said, when I had played against this last GP, the deck didn't seem to stand much of a fighting chance. Yeah, I'm tr I'm trying to phrase this in a way that is as kind as possible. Um, but when when I played against this deck last, um, it sort of felt like my opponent didn't do anything the entire match. Um, and again, that could have been variance. Maybe there is a sort of a secret to this deck that I'm not that I'm not getting. But I kind of doubt it uh, because I think that this deck is not very good. And if you are looking to attain competitive success with an Artifact Aristocrats deck, this is not where you should be at all. Um, I actually think Artifact Aristocrats as a concept is not bad. Yeah, it's no, really good. No, I don't think so, I don't think so either. But this this deck is not playing any of the cards that yeah, make that deck good, yeah, except no, I, I agree. I, um, I also think if you want to be playing Artifact Aristocrats, like, you should be playing Observer of Bounds. Like a four. I'd, I'd say this is unfortunately a four. <laughs> I'll give it like uh, two chili peppers because it's interesting, but I don't want to. S well, I mean, I, it's probably not going to perform I, very well. Yeah, I, I just, I think that this deck not having Channeler in it, and not having Lich in it, is kind of egregious. Um, I think those are those are very, very relevant parts of this of the archetype. This should be. Don't forget Vibrant Rapture. Vibrant Rapture um, in Artifact Aristocrats is a game ender. Uh oh, that uh not anymore. Um, hmm? Why not anymore? Uh, because you okay. So the combo does still work, but you need an you need an X two sack outlet, which the only one of is Channeler. So you'd rather not play that play that combo, I think. Oh, I see. Well, are you talking Since about Vivid know, March like or Vibrant then. Rapture? Yeah, they, they changed the they changed the card to say um, you can't X can't be zero. Cast it for zero. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you need you need an X two sack outlet, which means sometimes. I think I think the combo is still more worth it than people give it credit for, right? But I think that ultimately, uh, it is not a necessity of the archetype by any means at, at this point in time. Um, I, although it, the, the deck has cycled through a significant number of other combo options, uh, including uh, the now banned Toka combo. I, I Vivid say, March. Making Good riddance. A, <laughs> making a heart with my hands. Literally uh, banned. Because, yeah, Toka, a deck I was trying, a combo I was trying to keep secret for this GP so I could spike it. Um, yeah, you and, and two other people. Me, me, no, me and the person I worked with to build the deck, and somebody, and then somebody else separately, uh, Water the Leads, I believe, was just like, oh, this combo seems fucked up. And I'm like, well, cat's out of the bag. <laughs> <laughs>
Should have also done that to uh, Kalen before the uh, BGP patch. Um. Anyway. Anyways, oh, yeah. People were talking about Kalen back then too. Yeah, but yeah, they didn't discover was... the uh, judges decree combo until after the patch. So. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. True. True posted about that, and then I realized that judges decree was a card that existed, and then I put it in the deck. <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah. So, um. Hip squeak is on a control deck. Probably one of the few control players in this format that's that actually consistently plays control. Well, uh, we have uh, the big sort of news with this deck seems to be the three copies of Salome as win cons. Wait, you pronounced it Salome? Salome. I, I pronounced it Salome. Uh, I don't know what it is. Okay, uh, why is it supposed to be pronounced I as? Make the set. Hey, Zangi, if you're in chat, please uh give us the Salome, pronunciation Salome, yeah uh Salome actually seems more like reasonable but um okay either way this card's fucking incredible uh if you if you resolve it you your opponent is going to have a hard time not drowning um it's true so can you like describe the usual turn uh when uh, this card the usual turn at, as to my by my estimation would be play it for six uh plus one untap two Play a two drop, uh, and then you can activate it again. Plus one, untap two, and then play a two drop on your opponent's turn. Plus one, untap two, and it's and then uh, if your opponent is doing anything, you can also just mi doing anything with creatures. You can minus four to make that no longer happen. Um, yeah, Salome is a very powerful win con. Uh, the rest of the deck is sort of a. Ba it seems to be a base. Oh no, it is just Grixis. Um, it is a just Grixis heart attack list. Um, Specifically, it's a list that's been to service the deck building needs brought on by Cosmic Coalescing, which is a very powerful card. Uh, it, it's built to service those, and is and it is also built to service the so, deck building needs of casting a card that costs two blue, yeah, blue, black, black. Yeah. Um, which mm. is unfortunately not hard of Jadina, man. Good. Um, you can't. Shun Jun's for the like tail side of Ponya, right? That's not a thing. No, that's not how tails work. Um, hey, yeah, right. It works. The reality of the types. It works. Well. It no. works with um. It, it works with a little pig. With uh, adventures, not um, anymore. Yeah, but not the other way. Oh, right. Wait, this got changed. Yeah, yeah. it got changed. So no, I was actually on the receiving end of this. Uh, publishing press was another example of something that had to get changed. These copy effects now, because adventures are rules schlock, uh, you have to check the legality of the spell on resolution as well. And that yep. is meant to guard against adventure nonsense in general. I believe it was Tower between that and Peg that got changed, not Peg itself. Yeah, Tower of this guy got changed after I went GP with Ramp uh, playing that card. Yeah. Okay. Uh, this is decent. I have to give props for one enter Mephisto's gate. One I was entire. wondering about this as well. <laughs> uh, this is just technically correct. Uh, yeah, I guess. It's quality yeah. deck building. This is so like, like you don't you... get sealed to tombed. Or yeah, yeah, yeah. You never this know what they're the... going to seal the tomb you're too of. I mean, this is... this is ju I, I, we, yeah, we, no, make, no, no, we, we make jokes, but this is just objectively correct. Yeah, if you're playing yeah, two copies of these... You should be. Oh, I should have put. I should have put uh, retire in my sideboard instead of enter Mephisto's gate, so I could have another act card. Ah, <laughs> well, <laughs> I, uh, I lose uh, again. Uh, label metrics. Um. Uh, yeah. Sorry. Uh, I say that while stat dex is down. Uh. I. Uh, well, I lose again. Um. <laughs> no, but uh, the, this deck is. Yeah. Things solid. It's a pip food control deck, which I am always sort of. Scared to sit on the other side of the table from, uh, and especially when I'm playing a deck that plays three mana X one <laughs> these days. Um, Big. Well, uh, I oh. hope we don't match up against one yeah. another until top X. Uh, so um, three chili peppers sorry. because I don't want to watch this deck. Uh, three chili peppers because or three chili peppers because I do want to watch this deck. <laughs> I don't want to sit across from it. Four chili peppers because it's trying something new. Salome yes. is. Ultimately, uh, new stuff. I, w I want. I want to see this deck in action. I would just rather not have that action be happening to me. Oh, did Neon um, just win? Uh, yeah, Neon Blue just won. Neon just won a game. Oh, well. Yeah. 
We haven't well, gone to Neon's deck yet, have we? We haven't, but it's technically no, the I most guess. winning I deck in the... Yeah, it's technically the most winning deck we have so far. And turns yeah. out uh, Requiem yeah, is the most uh, losing deck right now. Yeah, Requiem, Requiem was on Kaelin. So currently, <laughs> Kaelin is the, is, has the... All right, someone, the, someone found the answer. Somebody found the answer. Know, Kaelin, Kaelin is, is dead, smile. As we know, <laughs> statistics is when you draw conclusions from a sample of one. Yeah, uh, yeah, hundred uh, percent. That, yeah, that's, that's the MSEM way. Worst um, it true that's is. the magic way. That's the magic way. Um, Just in general. According to science, Kalen is the worst deck. Yeah, yeah zero percent win rate. <laughs> Do you want to get this great? Kalen will have negative win rate. Do you guys just want to jump to Neon's deck so we can talk about it and get Neon in yeah. voice no, chat? No, let's 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 continue as normal. Uh, what is what is the answer? Come the on, let's just is... jump there. Uh, okay, we, we we should go back though, because there there are some things I have thoughts about. Yeah. Um, oh, it's it's um, oh it's Neon. assemble the party. Huh. It's assemble the party. Hmm. Interesting. Uh, assemble yeah. the party being a new card from MSL, <laughs> which is a GSC that is discounted by the number of legendary creatures you control. Generally good. GSCs tend to be strong. Um, I am a little suspect on some of these tutor choices. I will not lie to you. Um, I think that you should probably be on more copies of Henry and not all Sycamore. What's that card do? Um, hey, what's up, guys? It's your boy. Yeah, can, we're talking about your deck right now. Deck. Can you, like, tell us we about the deck? We talking about here. Talk, yeah, talk about the most winning deck in the GP so far. I did. I'm currently, uh, I'm currently up a game in the GP. Yeah. Technically first, I think, so. Yeah, you are you're obviously the most win. winning player in the GP. Uh, you're yeah. you're the best player ever in the history of MSEM, according to statistics. Yeah, <laughs> no, very that's real that's and very true statistics. Words. <laughs> yeah, so you know, I have one a GP, so I'm basically. Anyways, so tell us about how your deck works. On my party till I jack. All right, so it's pretty simple, <laughs> the, in concept at least. Um, we uh have um we have a bunch of legends. I can a bunch see. of what a ton of legends because we have assembled the party. Um, and what we want to do is we just want to put as many legends as we possibly can onto the battlefield and then use assemble the party to draw into kind of like legends don't have really good like overrun effects besides uh who's yeah. which uh takes a little bit to get there, but um, there are ways to like pop off. Um, Crew Master Gilo, I used to have four copies in the deck, but I got sick of drawing duplicates. So we have two and four assemble the parties. Basically, the whole idea with this deck is we just want to um, play good cards, and hopefully, once we have like a bunch of stacks pieces and hate bears, we can use assemble the party to either find the right kind of hate bear or just like whatever we need to win. So Jack when or Gilo. It usually ends up being like UJ to give my whole board evasion, or um, or sometimes Crewmaster Gilo, or oftentimes Jack. Um, Jack is very strong in this deck. You'll notice that uh, I have <clears throat> one Cloud Steel Summit. You don't usually cast Jack. It's possible. You have enough random fixing that you can do it, but most of the time you're just grabbing him as a one of with Assemble the Party. Um, but I do want to be able to hard cast the majority of my deck, so that's there why. There's a nice really, really sort of more. implicit design synergy there. You don't want to include too many legends because you don't want to draw too many duplicates. So toolboxing with GSC makes a lot more sense. Yes, yeah. assemble the party. Cool design. I'm actually really surprised yeah. that you managed to make assemble work. Like this is basically five color legends, but uh, toolboxier. Yeah, five no, colors. <laughs> yeah, but not ag but not as aggressive and in exchange more toolboxy now and more hate I think the absence of i think the absence of matia is noteworthy um i don't know why that is quite uh, and uh, I let me that with assemble the party right you uh, are matia. you have less of the fucked up with capital f and you jack starts uh, and you don't get access to ema emma in exchange emma the traveler yeah yes um the but but in exchange for three mana. yeah but in exchange uh you get to you get to hose certain archetypes that can be hosed um in very straightforward ways right by just searching for the card that does that like if there is a there is a storm adjacent deck in this gp spoilers 
um, I think putting I think putting uh, Henry into play would probably significantly benefit you in that deck, in that matchup. It's not it's Zaukar it's too adjacent. Well. It's too adjacent for me to recommend Zaukar over Henry is what I will say. Mm-hmm. But oh, Zaukar right. does Zaukar, Zaukar, again. Spoilers. We'll we'll get we'll get to it. Um, but uh, yeah, no, I think this deck is 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 mostly pretty solid. Yeah. Um, uh, although I think again, Mafia I think, to me just um, maybe I'm sleeping on it, but. Just reading it, I was like, I, I would have, I would have rather had something like Luna that protects itself better. To me, Mafia is the is the best green legend in the format. Um, I agree. Short, short, short form explanation of this because I put way too much thought into the Legends deck. It's my baby. Um, I, I'll, I will try to keep it brief. But TLDR, it shores up your matchups against counter spell decks by giving you a threat that they have to answer on their turn on their own end step, uh, which means they tap out, which means you can resolve your Jack, or you can resolve your Emma, or whatever. Mm-hmm. Uh, it sort of, uh, it demands an answer on its own, because it is a reasonable grow threat. Um, it lets you sort of protect creatures from weird toughness interactions. Uh, it, can, it, it can give you a significant amount of, of weird sort of corner case interactions, like, as an example. If there is a Metal Munch, which is a card people are probably going to bring in against any variant, any any deck with Jack in it, right? Um, yeah. You can protect yourself from the Metal Munch. If there is a sort of Shaldrain's Rage, you can save an important creature from the Shaldrain's Rage. Um, if there is a block that is unfavorable, you can save a creature from that unfavorable block. And uh, even in even like just again as a two drop threat, I think Matia kills people way faster than you think. Although maybe again. Uh, I will I will give some credence to the fact that uh, your deck is significantly tighter on um, in terms of um, what you have room for. Yeah, like um, Matia yeah, is probably the cards with this deck hurts. Like, Matia, you probably uh, want like... to have three copies of Matia if you're playing Matia. Yeah, and yeah. because you want to draw. Well, I do. I, well, it wouldn't be at flash speed. That's the thing. If I had like one copy of Matia in the deck, the it having flash. Would not well, yeah, and it, having flash but, is the most important part of it. I'm saying, but I, like, I don't know. I'm yeah. not fully sold on s- certain choices in your main I, deck. Like, um, old Sycamore does not feel like a good card to me. It so believe it or not, um, old Sy- old Sycamore is here because it is. Uh, there's a lot of legendary. There's a lot of legendary creatures in the format that are really good, especially after. Um, what's it called? Uh, after MSL, uh, the MSL season. So we're seeing we're seeing some more legendary creatures, but primarily it's to uh, it's to hit like legendary permanents. There's a lot of legendary lands. There's a lot of enchant or story permanents. So rather, there's a lot of enchantments. There is, and obviously there's a lot of decks you sign it out for. Like Personally? you obviously don't want it in burn, but it also is just a big body. Personally, I agree with the decision to include Old Sycamore. Something's got to hit the uh, Monument of Queens. Something's got to hit the Villainy. Uh, stuff like that. Is this I just monument? don't think it necessarily should be in the main deck. I can see that, but I also want like to be able to fetch a high toughness creature with Assemble the Party. Because sometimes, because if you look at the rest of my deck, like the three is the highest. Uh, yeah, they're all kind of base. Small. Yeah, so mm-hmm. it's. It's good to get that kind of like. There are times where assemble is going to be reduced by four or five, and at that point, it doesn't matter. It's frequent. It's frequent because you have you have Lisa in the deck, and you have yeah. Um, yeah. It. I I almost never cast X is almost never well. I can all when I have assemble in the deck by turn five. It's usually um I can usually cast it for like yeah at least like X like I can cast it for like at least X is five. I can hit almost everything in my deck. So, um, also, card that is insane is, um, I'm trying to remember the name. It's like how Reinvent uh, used to have a fake X cost. Yeah. It's Queen and Dural- This uh, the Fierce. Yeah, that card. Um, pro three mana value or greater is protection yeah. is, is fucked good. up and weird. And it also lets you just randomly hose decks. Um, oh, yeah. This is true. I, I, personally would have a very significant difficulty answering a Queen Anduril, although uh, weirdly the card I put into beat Kaelin also beats Queen Anduril. Um, yeah. yeah. Uh, so I think Queen, I think, 
I think a lot yeah, of your choices sure. in hate bears were inspired. Um, you you get the sort of legends girl seal of approval. Um. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm gonna like give you five chili peppers for making gathering the assembled party work in a legend show because I said it wasn't possible because that would mean that you need to give up it, on. Well, yeah. Yeah, I don't think it is possible in the Ema deck in the Emma deck, <coughs> um, but yeah, I think it is possible here. I think yeah, this so is, good on you for making it work. I think trading off Emma and the other three copies of Jack for Assemble the Party is not something I would personally do, but I think this deck has a significant amount of competitive reasons to be played. I think it's a powerful deck, um, and I hope you do well with it. I yeah I would. Well, I'm already up again, so uh, good. Uh, yeah, I, mean, I am impressed with the toolboxing hate bears. So. And currently, I'm impressed by the fact that it has a 100 percent win rate. Um, but <laughs> we'll see how it does. Um, anyway, I was against the enchantments deck with like one creature, so don't get well, too impressed. We'll 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 we'll, we'll come I mean, back. We'll, okay. we'll see. That, that deck is currently considered pretty good. Yeah, uh, let's carry. Before so. Before we jumped forward, we were just about to move on to Herver's True Form Is It. Yes, we were. Yeah. Um, and... uh, this is a fairly straightforward cheat deck. What it's you do is you get a token, up. and then you either True Form Revelation it, or you Space Oddity it. Um, and you get a Dredgeline Colossus. Now, I have my problems with Dredgeline Colossus as a target over Desert Worms, namely that you have to play four copies of this horrible, horrible card to draw. Um... But I think when it resolves, it is actually very powerful. Is it? It dies I mean, to removal, right? It I mean, no, it, it has indestructible. indestructible. It dies to exile removal. Which it dies I mean, to some removal. It dies to some removal, and I think on that front, it is actually significantly worse than um, Desert Worms. Uh, but I think its ability to generate card advantage is useful. I think this deck is fine. There are some building choices I dislike. I think there should be four... Mystery of the Crashed Craft instead of any copies of Stroke of Fortune, for example. Yeah. Um, Another notable inclusion in this deck is Paul. Paul. I think Paul is, is, a, is a stronger card than everyone's giving it credit. No, uh, let's talk about Paul saying. for a moment, because Paul is a new card from Act. Yes, Paul is uh, Paul is a two and a Planeswalker for uh, is it two loyalty, plus one to loot, and zero to turn into a prowess, two two. Uh, it minus threes to uh, sort of regrow a sorcery <laughs> or an instant. And um, most notably, when, when they die, uh, they will sort of, uh, they will give you the opportunity to discard a card to return them to the battlefield with one loyalty. This is an incredibly useful ability for a planeswalker to have. It means that you can ensure that Paul survives combat. It means that Paul is basically the perfect polymorph target. Yeah. Also, yeah. you could have called this deck Polymorph, P A U L Y M O R. Okay, now I'm calling it that. And so yeah. it... Call it that in the document, call it that in the coverage, call it that forever. Um, but uh, <laughs> I think, uh, I think, okay. So I still back to being articulate. I think Paul is, uh, is the perfect polymorph target because Paul uh, is very hard to put down but, uh, without. Specifically, instant speed exile removal or explicit non explicit non uh, damage planeswalker removal, which is uh, more niche. Uh, than if you can't dog. catch Paul on the turn that they come down, you'll have to get them twice, basically. Now, what you can do is uh, frequently, if you can answer, uh, this deck has significant weaknesses, uh, some of which can be checked up to the way it's built. Dredge Line Colossus means that frequently they spend four mana and two cards to put a creature into play that then uh, gets got by yeah. a single piece of exile removal or an or edict. soon. <laughs> and that sucks. Uh, I would, which is, again, why I would prefer Desert Worms to this. I know I keep harping on it, but, you, you know, Desert Worms, you only have to play one of. Paul can shuffle it back into your deck. It can shuffle back into your deck after an exit. Um, it makes multiple bodies, so a ex piece of exile removal doesn't stop you. Um, but... I think this deck is fine. I would give it a 6.5 or a 7. I'm also extremely... Um, uh, why is it running for, for Tunis Flames? What does that card do? Um, I don't know. I, I, this, I think that card actually sucks. I forgot that they're still playing. Don't play Fortunus Flames. I think they're trying to flip um, it off the Polymorphs. I don't that's, think that's going to work out. Um, that's interesting. You know? That does actually work, right? It works, yes. but it's true uh, form reveals cards, so it does. Kind of work with I mean, well, no, but it's it because your polymorph target also just draws you eight cards. 
Well, like, that's like true. If, if you're polymorphing, you probably already know you're I'm probably already winning the game, so you don't need. That's what I'm saying. Is like I think Fortunus Flames is win more. Win more. Yeah. Is deep is fairly win more. Uh, I think it would be fine if it did anything when it was in your hand. Uh, but it all it does is make your opponent go, huh, neat. When you when you Valdez it, um, and then they get to exile it because you revealed it off Valdez. Uh, Wait, that's actually uh, it, it is Valdez hate, right? Because <laughs> I mean, sort of vaguely in the same way that like any burn spell is Valdez hate, but it, uh, yeah, because, but like, like Valdez, if you lose Valdez, the creature is whatever. The real power like, of Valdez is pinch. Anyway, uh, yeah, let's move on. Reasonable deck, reasonable deck. Not not built as well as it could be. Um, not as lethal as it could be. Okay, so giant um, poet. Marine. So this we is have... another of the anti greed decks. This is a variant of Teamer Tempo. Uh, Teamer Tempo went through some shakeups within the past few months because of nerfs such as Portal Fracture. Most notably, way back when, it was Bounty of the Gardens that got nerfed, and that was part of the reason why people started writing more copies of Mattia, and part of Mattia's general uh, rise to fame. This deck, before Marina and I, uh, Marina being giant eyed poet, before we workshopped it, was running some copies of Planet Far, Far Away. This has been a subject of some debate. I'm on the side of you should not be running straight card draw in tempo pretty much ever. There is some consistency issue in the deck that does not run card draw, but anytime that you are spending mana to draw cards, you are giving up your advantage on the tempo axis to do something worse than most decks can do better than you. Right. So while you are so much <coughs> screwed into praying to the heart of the cards if you're playing Tempo, Tempo is still a fundamentally powerful deck. For those who are not familiar with the form that Tempo takes in this format, every single card in this deck, every single one of these cards, is some form of flash. Your turn consists of playing a land, attacking with any creatures you've got, and then passing, because everything you cast is on your opponent's turn. That is the power of this deck. Now, specifically, the sideboard the sideboard carries some Rel Corrosions. It carries some Reminiscences because these days you really cannot be caught without Grave Hate. Consider Pod Watcher and similar combos. You really cannot be without the Grave Hate. Uh, but besides that, it's fairly standard. You've got the Spell Pierce. You've got extra copies of Solar Flare for your burn matchup. And then there's four copies of Still Dependent Ammonium for stuff like Villainy Nonsense. Shaw drains for stuff like go wide with clerics or with legends, as we now saw. Or that uh, Constructs deck that Hitster was playing the other day. Mm. Or legends, the other one. Yeah, uh, like it could be anything. Yeah, just board decks. Uh, besides that, four times Roggers, four times Portal Fracture, four times Xi Long. This is otherwise more or less the standard version of Rug Tempo that's been around for years adjusted for nerfs, and with some numbers shifted around to account for the current meta. Yeah. Seems rug tempo. It's a solid deck, and it either performs or, or it never gets what it needs, and then runs out of resources. Seems fine. Uh, yeah, I don't want to end up on the other side of, of rug tempo ever. Um, like I said, it's part of the anti-greed squad. Because I mostly play decks that don't want that, like, strongly dislike this matchup. It also but... eats... Uh, aggro decks, or it eats like burn decks for breakfast. Did not it, eat yes. aggro decks. No, it is. I don't believe in that. Like, it used it to eat burn for breakfast. Because you had no, it... Bounty of the Gardens, but stuff like Matia, stuff like Chilong Gust, which can uh, save your life against burn, stuff like even as simple as the Solar Flares or the. The absolute roughest part is the Veilborns if you're on burn. Because burn has such a high density of one drops of one mana if spells. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know about burn in particular, but I think this. I think this. No, deck I just I do slaughters know creature aggro. This deck even slaughters in creature form, aggro. It's very. It's very rough. Um, even I in the current form of both burn and rug tempo, just... rug tempo just bodies burn day and night. It's not right. even a contest. Yeah, rug rug tempo also slaughters creature aggro. It's it's. Very, very good at beating at beating creature decks in general. Um, what it's weaker against is decks that also play at instant speed, but can also go, they can also just sort of challenge it more, right? They can challenge it on its own turn more. Um, so similarly, it also is weak to decks that can go above it. Um, 
because it wants to keep games relatively small. Yeah, like that. Yeah, the big headache for Rug Tempo when I was playing it back in the day was stuff like work gates. Well, work gates kind of slaughtered everything. Basically, any kind of enchantment shell that ran embodied soul, because most of your main board yeah. answers in Rug Tempo are anti creature. Yeah. And eventually, Relic Corrosion did get added to the sideboard as a result of that meta pressure. But if most of your early game threats are things that have two bodies and are two different types, Rug Tempo is going to have a hard time dealing with you because Rug Tempo generally wants to keep your entire board empty to give space to its uh, Rogger's tokens. It wants to give space to Panya just to generally chip away at you while it stops you from doing anything. If you can get early things to stick, it becomes that much harder for Rug Tempo to do basically anything with yeah. its I think, Yeah, I think Rug is very bad against one and sometimes two mana non-creature engines is another thing it's very... It frequently will lose to because that's definitely true. Um, it I, th- I think it also loses to decks that can keep that can keep it from keeping the game small, right? And uh, can sort of go ridiculous in a resilient way. Uh, one that comes to mind is I think this deck has a sort of fifty fifty at at least matchup against Future Theft. Can you um, explain that? Uh, okay, so. Future Theft has a lot of spells that can challenge uh, that can challenge Rug, right? Um, it also has a one card win, uh, and challenging Rug and challenging Rug on its own turn or challenging Rug on your turn to have the answer uh, is one of the things you just have to do against it to not get run over. Um, because if they're spending money on if they're spending mana on answers, then they are not spending it on killing you. Um, Notably, you know, though. Some of the answers in Rug Temple can also generate threat at the same time if you play into them wrong. Yeah, like Portal Fracture. Augur, one, the, yeah, is like the main one. Available, Portal yeah. Fracture is the is another one. Machia, if you're reckless with stuff like Vein Drinker in some decks. Yeah. Yeah, I also I also think uh, if you want to beat it again, those those one mana engines are really really strong. Um, or even just like one mana very powerful threats. Uh, they don't even have to necessarily be value engines, one or two yeah. mana. Uh, you want to, like a founding hero resolving on your turn one is like is going right. to is going to mandate the sort of burn answer um, very soon, very very quickly. Okay, if let's like founding hero against this deck. Why don't you like just a normal creature aggro deck? Uh, because I think most normal creature aggro decks have threats that are worse than founding hero on turn one. Okay, can we like move on? I think yeah, we've talked let's about. Yeah, move on. They have more of them though. This is mostly meta talk yeah. about the matchups. Uh, anyway, uh, we have the gear did... deck. Uh, who's your yeah, average idiot? <laughs> trying to think if I know who that is. Uh, um, he's he's a friend of mine. Yeah, he's a friend of ours. Oh, so a, so a new name. Um, right. So this is a uh, random. Oh wait, no, it's 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 Captain Ajani. Oh, it's Captain Ajani. Yeah. Okay. okay. It's yeah. Captain Ajani. Never mind. Uh, not quite a new face. Uh, then. Uh, but, uh, this is the Giridris deck, a deck I, uh, sort of, oh, sort of as backstory, tried to, tried to force once upon a time, um, with Giridris, with Giridris on its own initially, and then, um, what, what's the other, what's the other one that puts dragons to play? It's Jund, um, Chang, Wild Tyrant, um, which is absent from this list, uh, in favor of Nova Heart Dragon, uh, which does a similar thing in giving you a respin, but also acts as a haste enabler. I think that's fine. Uh, I think the big new thing is also uh, Honor, the one of, which is fun. But basically, the idea is that this is a variant of reanimator that exchange for playing more bricks wins the game instantly when the reanimation target comes down. There's no recovery from it. Um, yeah, I think Giridris has the problem of that you're playing a million dragons. Uh, although this one is leaner than most, which means it's more likely to whiff, and I think it's not playing Cheng, so it doesn't have the gear just redundancy. But maybe you don't need to play Cheng now that Operation 433 is out. Either way, this... I would like like to see it perform. It is a graveyard combo deck that can kill on turn three, uh, which also means it's a graveyard combo deck that can die on turn three to Sheikai's Redoubt. Um, yep. true. That be yeah. And there's no uh, underneath the beneath the Jardina, which is a uh, which is a uh, major a way to actually not get redoubted. Yeah. yeah, which which is um, very very unfortunate as a choice. Uh, but beyond that, I think the deck is fine. This it's deck, fine. I mean, looks really fragile. 
There's like it's, literally nothing in the deck besides. Just the readout check. I mean, it is it is it is just an interaction check. Yes. If you if you don't have exactly readout, you have like spell pierce and duress to try to like fight it. Yeah, and you can also just like you can also just frequently like if you are. I will say that you can actually fight redoubt in this deck sometimes. Like uh, I think this deck has, a, has has an easier time with literally every other kind of graveyard. Oh, it's, absolutely. It's not I'm playing just, beneath the Jadina. Um, yeah, I'm just saying that I think you're not stone dead to one copy just because you do have like a lot of dragons. You also and have Answer all of these call. fatal lootings, so like you're usually gonna have. Although you only have two AMC, to which to me is a problem. If I were, if I were to build this deck, I would probably be on four. Um, on four what? AMC. Uh, AMC. Oh, uh, Midnight's Call. Oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, but beyond that, uh, I think there are some slight cho- there are some slight choices I disagree with. Some some less slight choices I disagree with. But uh, overall, the deck is a turn three uh, interaction check, yeah. Yeah, um, yeah, which yeah. is just a, a a good place to be. In Kalen's world, where in game one, Kalen will frequently fail that turn three yeah, interaction you're just check. Die. Yeah. That turn three interaction check. Um, Speaking of Kalen, the next two decks are Kalen. Are they the exact We've same decks? We've already talked about Kalen. No. 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 Hersey, oh. of course, built a heavy multicolor. Right? Yeah, Hersey built deck a with a bunch one. of utility. Okay, well, probably, we yeah. have Rest we have already talked about. Almost the exact okay. 75, except with three Concord and one Decree instead of two and two. Three and, three three and one is the, is the one that I was playing. So, Rest of Kings isn't that better. different from the one that we talked about before. So uh, Rizzi's deck might warrant a bit of discussion, but just yes. a bit that way. It's not Kalen, comma archetype. It's doing something interesting. It's Control it's Kaelin, plus Kalen. It's Control with Kalen as a win con with the specific Kalen payoffs of... Uh, of globe as usual, but also fucking Bio. biohazard and yeah. maze collection, yep. both of which are pretty, both of which are pretty brutal with Kalen. Um, yeah, yeah. And also, it's uh, very time consuming to resolve maze collection, so it's not going to be good it's for true. commentary. Uh, so I'm I just going to give it one you, chili pepper right there. Then you can well, no, but then you can start codex talking moments. about eating Umbreons or whatever. Um, <laughs> this is a Codex moment. Um, <laughs> Certified Codex moment. Um, but yeah, I the other big sort of there's some there's some weird ass cards in here. I will say there's Viper Ambush. I which mean, you have to you have sick. to kill the Kalen somehow, and like they're gonna attack you with it most of the time. No, no, I think Viper. I think Viper Ambush is kind of sick. <laughs> <laughs> At least a little bit, kind of sick. Um, I will say I, it's a lot worse in GP because they're gonna know it exists, whereas in League, well, no, there's but literally you're... no chance that anybody knows Viper Ambush is a card. Well, yes, but even then they're gonna be like, oh, they pro- oh, oh, they might have Celestial Banishment or Journey's End or Cursory Glance, and they're not gonna be like, oh, they, I, I have to play around the Viper Ambush unless they, <laughs> unless they watch this stream and seen us say, you need to I play. Mean, it's open I'm... deck list, like they're gonna know. I'm... Yes, but they're gonna yes, forget. It's... They're gonna forget. It's cognitive load. Um, but what I'm saying is, this is this is a public service announcement. Do not play around the Viper ambush because I need a Viper ambush clip. I need a Viper ambush clip. <laughs> well, no, don't so play around serious. it if we're commentating. You can play around it otherwise. If, yeah. yeah if, if, if no one's spectating the game, play around it. Play around it. To your heart's content. But I want to see somebody get got by Viper ambush in a big way. I, I really, like really do. Clouds. I think this I think this card. I think counting clouds is actually extremely good. Um, yeah, it's. It is, to me uh, at least, um, a side slash upgrade to Star Jump. Yeah. I think it is a Star Jump side grade uh, because it, it does have a deck building requirement, but in exchange, it is a better card. Um, I will say that I don't like this in the mirror or the like pseudo mirror. Like, I think this is on. I think the, the, like more. No, I think the biohazards games. really do actually do a lot. I, I do. I, I agree that biohazard is really good. Um, Biohazard is really good in the Kalen matchup because, again, early you can play it just X1 to wipe out all of the yeah, things they're making into an engine things. with Kalen. Um, I also think that it is the kind of inevitability that Kalen doesn't like to see against other interactive decks because um, Kalen decks draw a lot of cards and frequently cast a lot of very cheap spells. Yes, yes. Uh, and I, so Biohazard, Biohazard, Biohazard will be chunking them. The matchup, but you don't have the Decree Lock in the late game. 
I think you and have, but yes, but I also think you have biohazard days. in the late game. <laughs> right, but biohazard which is, it, which is, is also its own lock. Game than decree. Well, no, no, the lock you have in the late game is maze collection, drawing you counter spells. This is also true, is that maze collection is an incredible, incredible... It draws you mind rip, think, and then yeah. that locks I think, the opponent. I think this deck is, is very strong. I'm, I, I'm, I am sort of in, inclined to uh, give this deck we'll a, a strong 7.5. Um, because, again, it's not as unfair as Kalen and as the other Kalen deck, and I think, honestly, this deck, if this deck stuck around for eternity, I would be as happy as a clam. But, um, no, like, I, I also have to give it five chili peppers, and I would I would even if it was just a regular deck with, with, um, with, with ambush in it. But it is also, yeah, it is also, besides, is sort of, besides the silly goofing of, of ambush, it is also just extremely it is extremely good and cool. Uh, compliments to the chef if they're watching this. Uh, Herzy, you did a good one. Um, okay, let's move on to my deck. It's Black Red Unearth. I mean, I've been playing this deck in League. So You've been kicking people's teeth in. So uh, the main th difference with this deck from previous versions is that I'm running Cannon War Driver because yeah. it turns out that there isn't actually that many good unearthable three drops in the format. Like, I was super adamant about not playing Crimson Curtain Favored because that card's, uh... That card is better than you think. It's not it good. Is. No, I'm, I'm with Ricky on this one. That's not a card. I think, like, we debate... Like, Gal thinks the card's so good, sure but Earth, I think the card's bad. People definitely oversell the Curtain Favored in Burn. Burn does not want to run it. Don't ever sure. play that in Burn, no. I think it is good in exactly this deck and nothing else in any other context. It's... Fucking I think horrendous. It's good in this deck yeah. I think, like, most of the time they're just gonna not discard any cards, and then you're yeah, and then you get to do a big them. number to them. You're gonna do and like three. Yes, and that's fine. A four, a, a three mana four it's two. That three mana three two with haste. It's a four two. Um, uh, the problem is sure. that it doesn't like. Sure, you unearth. So it's bad when you unearth it early, and it's bad when you unearth it late. It's not bad when you unearth it early though. Is it it's significantly stronger. It's more a lot worse than all of the other trees. Okay, so so you unearth it early. What do you do with your hand? Do you discard the cards that you don't want? Because if you discard them, uh, then you're kind of forced to wheel. If you don't discard, then you're hitting. You're getting in the I face don't think for a bunch. Discarding cards you, you don't want in your hand is the thing. I, I also think you frequently you frequently just don't. Like, you frequently just don't discard and go straight for the burn and, like, just acknowledge to your opponent that you, both of you are just going to be accepting burn as the choice. I, I just think that if your plan is to go for the burn on it, it's just not efficient. Like, I think yeah. it is... The, the I think a 3-mana 4-2 that three don't read to your opponent would not be a playable card. And I think this is... I think it deals significantly more than, than 3. You no, know, it usually game. does around 3 to 4. And then no, it also I hits think, you in the in face. Un, I think it, in my experience, it's done closer to four or five in the early game. Yeah. Okay. So, but then it also hits you in the face for five, and now you, now you're losing life for blood jade profit. Yeah. I am. I am significantly more sort of loose with my life total in this. Okay. Deck let's stop. Let's stop arguing about blood jade. Yeah, let's or, stop arguing about a card that's not in the deck. <laughs> so war driver, master beatdown. I also. Yeah, I also think, by the way, that uh, Rattler is the other is the other thing I would nominate in Crimson Curtain Favors slot, and it is it is very strong. Okay, so you would cut uh, Rattlers what, so, for for Crimson's? No, I just think that uh, they have a similar toll on your life total. Um, but Rattle, but Rattler has a unique usage. Rattler actually um, does stuff like it actually affects yeah. the board. I think I think honestly, I, like I would have I would have gone for Rattler over Joe. I Kaijo was kind of mid. Okay, um, so, so like back to the original topic about like uh, Kano War Driver. So what I realized when playing this deck is that hasting a performer ambition is basically the strongest thing you could be doing. So yeah, instead of, I agree with that. so I decided to add some Kano War Drivers into the deck so I can haste the performer ambition even if I don't have Ghoulish unearthing. Like this. Yeah, and we, like hasting performer is so good that we briefly went slightly off the deep end into the world of playing Artie's Invocation. Um. See, that was actually a consideration. Uh, before I decided to settle on optimizing Villainy, I was actually looking at Unearth. Is there a way to make Unearth clock even faster? And um, Artie's Invocation was... Well, it seemed somewhat reasonable. It, it is reasonable. But I think it is also hard to fit in a way that is not 
clunky. Yeah. The other thing is that the standard unearth shell just decimates your hand so quickly because that's what your game plan is. Yeah, I mean, the, the trading unearth cards is, for tempo. Unearth is secretly actually also a a soft hand a soft hand pressure deck. It is it is a um, it is an aggro deck, yes, but it, one of the main ways it it beats you is by pl placing big threats into play that put pressure on the hand. Yeah. Um, you know, one such card Urchin being King, uh, most notably Performer slash Urchin King, but also Augury and Minotaur Skull Smasher. Yeah, that's also and, my other um, replacement for one, for, uh, one of the Crimson Curtain favorite slots. Um, I think Kai... No, I think it was also replacing uh, Oil Driller. Oh yeah, Oil Driller um, too, because that card just... It's like, it's has the same I problem of Crimson Curtain favored where it just doesn't no, affect the board. I think Oil Driller is better than Crimson Curtain favored in most scenarios, okay, but I also... I think oil. Dr I think also oil driller just has this unfortunate friction with ghoulish unearthing so much of the time, and I don't like you know. Okay, let's stop arguing about cards that aren't in a deck. It's not even an argument. I just think it's, <laughs> I think it's just true that oil driller has some unfortunate friction with certain cards in the deck that I think makes okay, it but, reasonable. But I think any other notable includes Ricky. No, not really. Everything else is like pretty. Or oh, actually, Kaijal is really good against Kalen because. If you can haste out like Hydro, then you can whack them and make them sack yeah, the Kalen. You can, you can sack the Kalen. That, right. that is funny. Um, and it's it also can make the Kalen phase out. Uh, yeah, just on yeah which, which is pretty. It's a which pretty is cool. relevant. Which is relevant. Um, sideboard Herald of Oblivion um, is the big note of Oh, one. right, right. I forgot that, I did that. That was, made the that last was minute change. From this morning, um, <laughs> Ricky and I were just sort of in the, in the tank. We're like, we don't want to play these Herald's main, right? No, we, we, oh. we, were tr we tried to play the Herald's main. Yeah, we tried to play the Herald's Man, and you were like, I don't want to do that. Yeah, and then last um, minute I decided to switch out to sideboard cards for Herald of Oblivion, so that I'm better against uh, sideboard Grape Hate by boarding in the one war driver and the two Heralds, so that I can like, try yeah, to one-shot people. Yeah, and I think that's actually extreme. I think that's actually very strong. I didn't this know there was a card. What the? This deck can enable Herald. It's very, very easily. Um, the big issue is that you don't want to in a lot of matchups. Yeah, so that's why it's sideboard. To... You have to make intentional, like intentional decisions to lose more life rather than less, um, which is not where you want to be in a significant amount of matchups. But in a significant amount of matchups, they are not putting enough pressure on you to for Harold to not be crazy. Or you know, you just bring it in against Burn, so that you put them in a catch twenty. It, it weirdly fills um, sort of an element of the niche that Umbradu Goliath once played in this archetype. Jeez. Um, Way way back. Um, what a Umbradu. card! It's banned in every format. <laughs> yeah, I Wait, they why. banned on Bradu Goliath yeah. and MSNBH? No, no, not all, all legal happened. formats. Or, no, no, no oh, all, all relevant formats. Yeah. <laughs> oh, <come on>. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm like doing the motion of like running my. Like running my hand through the air next to my neck to like telling you to cut the feed. Um, <laughs> but uh, no. We just had a set full of legends. Come on. <laughs> we just had an MSEDH set specifically. <laughs> well, hmm. um. All right, so that's oh, enough oh, about my deck. Even, burn, even worry, start camp pressure, go to metal bunch, duress. Nothing else notable the here. Sounds like the time to dunk on Commander. <laughs> Uh, anyway, uh, we have five chili peppers, and let's uh, give me give me the rating and move on. I say. Yeah. Oh, uh, right, rating uh, seven. Sure. I think it. I think it. It has a worse time against Sheik Guys Redoubt than a lot of other graveyard decks, which is what keeps it from being a seven point five. Or, yeah. Um, because frequently Sheik Guys Redoubt can be insanely mana positive and tempo positive. So. And that's why I run the Cannon War Drivers now. <laughs> exactly. Um, okay, so Epid. This is labeled a burn deck. I don't entirely agree. It does win yeah. through burn spells. This is burned by a certain it's definition true. of burn. By that definition, we would also consider heart attack to be burn. Yeah. <laughs> this is this is. I think it is the deck he would play. Not not burn. Um, I am surprised this deck isn't playing the bleed. Ritual. Uh, it's not. Um, it's not that easy to enable bleed on your. Yeah, because like, this deck also yeah. doesn't actually have it's very much like burn in it anyway. And I don't know. Like, I also think I, I tried to build Monarch Storm a while ago, and your rituals are terrible. And that card is actually like quite good. 
I am. If but you can enable it. How do you enable it on like your own turn? Already kind of trying to enable it with own system. Um, I, okay. Attacking with the two drops that you have to resolve to win the game anyway. Yeah, um, so you have to wait a turn and actually connect. I mean, you already you have, have to, to wait anything. a turn anyway. Most of which the time. Is okay, the but now you have to connect. I'm, which is the reason why I'm low on this deck for what it's worth. I think playing. I think I don't want to ever have to rely on a flatboat artisan. <laughs> um, because that card is like the world's number one premier removal magnet. You um, don't always have to have a reducer in play. You only have six but... reducers in the deck. Is that enough? A significant, yeah. a significant amount of your hands are very reducer in a way that I think is not. I, I think honestly, more than being reliant on reducers, this deck is reliant on drawing culminating chaos. This deck is also frequently going to be uh, going to lose to itself. Oh yeah. Um, and I'm I'm not a fan of that. I think there there, there are other like all in turn three combo decks that don't lose to graveyard hate that I'd play instead. Uh, like for example, sort of the supernova okay. decks um, come to mind. Um, but no, I I, th I think this deck is not very good. I think this deck is okay. I think culminating chaos is a good enough card that it like kind of carries. I I, I, to a degree, I think. I don't know if that's like. Enough. I'm also guess... not really sure what these Galvin coal lines are trying to accomplish. It's to enable oh, goddess um, whimsy. Yeah. Oh, I see. I also okay, think I this is a very bad goddess's whimsy deck. I yeah, mean, there are like four types. <laughs> I think the functional density of this deck is all over the place. I've been considering some concepts, such as decks that are a bit more reliant on Amelie, Combination Chaos, Unceasing Flames, but I don't think this is the way to do it. Uh, what did the previous I really have to either. What did the previous Mono Red Storm deck look like? Um, uh, there were a few of them. It was you like this, but purple Goddess's flying? Whimsy. It's like this, but Goddess's Whimsy wasn't nerfed. Um, <laughs> oh. and Instant of Brilliance wasn't nerfed, which was like really important. Yep. Right. Okay. No wonder those it, decks it were like better. A card for this deck because you could actually you didn't even always need the combo. You could just Instant of Brilliance, and then it was just like cumulative grape shot. You just hit them for one all the time and also it was a fork which is already like pretty good Wait, in, it got in nerfed uh, I don't, I don't, I don't, oh cool. it got bad never mind instance of brilliance got, got banned, banned. Okay. yeah no it, it doesn't exist anymore yeah okay. and this is mostly uh... for what it's worth i gave it a 5.5 5. Uh, i'll give it like three uh three chili peppers it's like it's sort of interesting to watch it, because anyway. it's a storm deck I do actually have to head out, so I was just uh, okay. Goodbye. Goodbye. Yeah, like... um, now this is uh, my round one opponent, Skagra. Um, now uh, this uh, this deck is one one of the aforementioned Supernova decks, although it is the deck that is going for specifically for Supernova Dragon Calling, which is more difficult than other Supernova lines. So it's Dragon Storm. Um, it's Dragon Storm. Yeah. Um, it. Uh, in exchange for being slightly di more difficult to pop off with than something like Dragon Calling into Infuse or Dragon Calling into that seven drop enchantment that uh, gives every creature plus four, plus four, or whatever, um, is that uh, this deck seems to be in on Eminent Extraction Engine. Yeah, I was about uh, to mention that as a notable include. As a target for Relic Heist. Uh, which allows you to cast Dragonstorm from your hand uh, without the aid of a supernova, which I think is because I, I also think that uh, Relic Heist is better at actually at casting Dragonstorm than Supernova because Supernova has the issue of you actually need more mana after the Supernova to cast a Dragon Calling, which, versus like the other Supernova decks where your spell is exactly seven mana. Yeah, um, yeah, uh, I think that Eminent Extraction Engine. Um, Relic Heist is interesting tech. I would like to see this in action. Um, I am there are certain things in this deck that I am a little incredulous about, namely the literal zero interaction main deck. It's a combo deck. You're not gonna find room for interaction. I, mean, I think no. I think this deck has room for interaction. Um, but in this uh, part, what are you cutting? I guess what am I cutting? Some of the combo pieces. That, like no, you'll I need. Think, I think yeah. I think you should cut down on some of the seven drops because those are gonna break you. Um, and what? you're already playing four Shimmering Dragon, which are going to brick you. I guess Capture Brilliance is fine, because if you manage to cast it, you probably win. Probably. Um, but 
yeah, I, I think beyond that, I think this deck is... I also think uh, that the mana base is slightly sketch. Um, that four, four Sunset Monastery is maybe too many. It's but fine. I could, be, I could be wrong. I could be wrong. Okay, so... Yeah, I'll give it like two Chili Peppers. I'll give it three Chili Peppers. It's interesting, kind of. I'm giving it three because of the Extraction Engine. I'm giving it four because of the Relic Heist Extraction Engine of Chili... Uh, as Chili Peppers go, I think as... Evaluation goes, I would give it like a six point five or six, but six, yeah, six. But uh, cool, cool deck. Okay, so um, looking... I also think it actually is facing a decent matchup game one. Not game one, it's match one, round one, because uh, I have a harder time interacting with storm style decks. Although um, there are lines that can kind of totally hose them that I have. You should have played more. Uh... Spell hate. You should play Henry in in eight sack. Oh, I I have a I have ways to beat spell decks. Um, although Henry would, I probably could play Henry. Uh, one of the funniest ways that I can hate on spells is just by removing all of my opponent's lands. Um, because then you can't cast spells. Um, yeah, I guess that that also works. It is a plan. But it's higher effort than just uh potting out a Henry. That's true, but I also think that Henry doesn't win this matchup. Um, okay, let's move on. Uh, next up is Patra on ramp. Uh, this is a. Is this ramp? This, this list feels bizarre. Um, I will. It say. is ramp. It's running Jabai. It's running Erolin. It's running Helene. Yeah, this is straight up ramp. The sweet, How does it actually the ramp? Sweet feels. I think it's just RFE. Question mark? Yeah, it's just RFE. It's three copies so of RFE. This was a list that was put together by uh, Pipsqueak. She had it originally called it uh, Petra Gets a Clue. You can search it in the chat. And one of the game plans here is to grab uh, Erolin, the boy, off of Gerald's Wretched Cure. And what that does, among other things, is turn all your clues into mana sources. That's on turn four, right? Erolin is generally a turn four play. Um, even if you get a RFE out, it's still a turn four. Uh, how are you ramping early? You're not. So that was part of a whole discussion that I think Pip had with Petra. You don't want dorks in this kind of deck. Mm. Instead, what you're going to be doing is you're going to be trying to not die in early game using cards like, like Crest, like Void Flare, like Chilon Gust. So that it's not really ramp then. Like, or is it? Can it be considered ramp if you're not trying to ramp early? If if you're finishing off of Jabaya and Erolin, I'd say it's ramp. But so is all of the so is the mid range decks that run Jabaya. Right, like is heart attack a ramp deck? Because you could make that yes, same argument here. Yes, no, I, mm. I, I don't know. Okay. It, like this is this is this sort of becomes a very silly conversation very quickly. Right. Um, let's let's not focus too much on labels yeah. right now. <laughs> let's not focus on no, labels. But I have outlined the basic plan of the deck. The basic plan of the deck is to not die in early game. Get up to turn four. And mostly use uh, Gerald's Rush Cure to toolbox stuff like Jabaya and Erolin for its win conditions. Ramp targets include Seeker Elizabeth. Well, kind of. It's mostly Seeker Elizabeth's ability. You've got Leoctra Stormheart in here. And does it... Hmm, I Thanks. guess in a certain way you could count Helene Trant. I feel like a lot of the threats in here feel a little suspect. Um, most notably, Leoctra feels not good. Travels okay. was committed to playing the, this card, so they're just trying to find a good deck for it. Okay. Yeah, true is the bonus sheet card from uh, Heroes of Renatos. Uh, I mean, we did have the whole discussion a while back. If you want to see your cards in the format, try building around them yourself. This is Worth true. Worth a shot. So, um, although I don't... those discussions, I was expressing some... I was somewhat skeptical about Liactru as a ramp target because they're just way more impactful walkers at four at uh four five and six then the yeah i was about to say i think the is is about as impactful as xanagan which costs one less mana as an example yeah but it's not in, uh, it's not in it's red, not in blue. blue red but it is in the format <laughs> <laughs> Which is which makes it a consideration, right? The, you don't just evaluate by color. Um, although, again, the color difference is relevant uh, in a way that is that I, I don't want to sort of minimize. 
Um, but yeah, if if this if this user was sort of committed to playing Liactru, this isn't the worst I, deck for it. Yes, I was about to say I can't call this the best way to do that because I would be being disingenuous. Um, but it is a way to do that. Anyways, um, I'll call it deck team includes because that's more. Deck, yeah. I feel like this deck is a five, is like a kind of definitional five insofar as it as it is a collection of mostly unrelated good cards with one piece of synergy, uh, which is that um, that line with the Frog King. What do you do if that thing gets killed? Uh, you don't. You only have one copy, right? You yeah, recur it at all? Just don't, just don't let it get, just don't have it get killed. That's fine. You're um, going to be relying a bit on Control Discourse for that, and Kane Dancer. Control Discourse so, is pretty interesting. Part of the cards. It's, just don't get it killed. That's fine. Um. <laughs> okay, let's move on. Roland's on negative one jar. Wait, what? They're on negative one Fair jar enough. champion. Um, interesting. Just drop in real quick to say that if Roland's deck, so you should um, F5 and not see the bro. Well, I mean, you can check out the broken deck then maybe. Hello. Okay. Right. I can talk about my deck so, first. Sorry, Hello. sorry. Just to make sure that we're all Hello. seeing the same thing. There are multiple yeah. cards in this deck that say they're, they're negative one. Oh yeah, they are. They are. <laughs> <laughs> negative one, Barbaric Charity, Ultimate Pro... 27, uh, I'm born in Dexuma. I'm tearing. What is going on? Okay, so... Let me just talk through the deck a little bit for you guys. So, it, the Jara Champion I've got negative one of because I'm sort of playing a mid-range control strategy. So, if I go negative one Jara Champion, then I have less creatures. And so... Okay, what about the minus one just business? How did you do that? Um, the my... <laughs> So, minus one just business is the... Um, you notice that like a lot of decks are going anti Kalen in the format, and so that means there's not many Kalens in the GP, and so I felt like I didn't need any anti Kalen deck. Okay. And the 48 copies of Wandering Soul. <laughs> Well, yeah, so one Wondering Souls has synergy with playing multiple copies of it, so I just decided to play 48. <laughs> okay, okay, and uh, the 27 Aboran Exhumers. Um, 27 Aboran Exhumers? Uh, yeah, I mean, I, uh, I, I'm playing a lot of creatures because I've got 27 Aboran Exhumers, so I need a way to return them. <laughs> what, what about the 28 Unceasing Flames? <laughs> Black, you fuck up. <laughs> yeah, so, um... <laughs> I put in the, the Road to Karamapu Scorch in my deck, uh, and that counts as a token and a card, and so Lackey was like, sorry, I'm just gonna, like, make your deck this. And so, um, yeah. I have a oh, this Leyline is... Alignment field there, which is banned in MSCM, so... Ten! Ten no, you, have, you, have, you have negative one. Wait, line alignment field, so it's fine. Uh, okay, okay. Can I get an extra line? Can I get a line break on this uh, chart, please? Yeah, I think you just hold shift and uh, um, return. Okay, yeah, if you want the extra deck, let's give me a sec. Um, well, sure. No, I want, I want you to talk about your 28 and ceasing flames. Sorry, there are... Okay, we have to put you on here twice, um, because yeah, so... I, 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 I do have to rate this deck. Um... <laughs> I do, I do. Yes. Um, so the the unceasing flames is again, it's kind of like the the lost sellers because unceasing flames is synergized with lots of copies of itself, and so you can just put lots of copies in the deck. <laughs> yeah, I think you you're the, you're currently the best deck in the you're currently the best unceasing flames deck in the format because you're running twenty eight of them. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You're also, and, you're also and because I, know, I know people might have concerns about consistency when I have 23 times a Lagris title master, but I do have 17 times Word of Eternity. So I have my cards. Uh, yeah, okay. let, me, let me find my oh, list. What, like... what a delight. What a delight. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Um... <laughs> Oh, oh, that's very good. Okay. Uh, okay. So it's basically uh, Pipsqueak's Jet Blue Fever Dream. Just cut to uh, I cut to Last Request in favor of to Renzai. So if you just like, I just sent like what's basically the deck in. All right. Yeah. Um, yeah. 
voice chat, and it's, it's just that. But I yeah, I swapped to oh. the last request outfit of the planeswalker because oh. me and Pip were talking about potentially right, so putting in another green page. Page. Can, can you fix it? Just... Can you fix the list already? Please refresh the page. Can you fix the list? I think I'm just going to screenshot this just for yeah. posterity. Yeah, please, please. I need to. <laughs> I need. I need this as sort of a memento. I've been. Uh, I've been it's... sitting on the stream this whole time, cooking up like what I was going to say when you guys got to this deck. <laughs> yeah, you. it's like you improvised or you prepared well because I definitely could have not <laughs> improvised that. Okay, yeah, no, that's sure it. That's, that was I've a very strong bit. The uh, for posterity. Okay. <laughs> yes. Yes. Um. We have the, uh, the most powerful deck in MSE. Um, <laughs> uh, but instead, instead of that, uh, oh. instead of that, you have submitted, uh, it seems, JetBlue, uh, which is um, a deck named as much because uh, I believe Pipsqueak built this on a plane. Um, yeah, or, or it was either on a plane or just after getting off a plane um, and being very tired. I, yeah. Um, you know what? Sorry? It is another Gerald deck. We yes. Yeah. yeah. Earlier. Hmm. Well, actually, it's two Gerald's. It is. It, uh, this was a Gerald Martin Cure because it's Gerald Fugitive is the best, like basically the best target for it. So. Uh, yeah, I know. I agree with that. Uh, that Gerald Fugitive is the best Gerald Wretched Cure target. Um, Flavor you, win. You, 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 yeah, uh, you are also playing Posey, Beck, uh, and Zhang Mao, and um, yeah. you know all, all of these very powerful targets. Um, I think this deck is solid, actually. I think this deck is, is very solid. I think this will uh, have a. I haven't. Yeah, I haven't lost a game with it yet in league. I've played three matches. So it's not a huge sample size, but well, not lost a match. Sorry. Uh, so it's like, and yeah, it's felt pretty solid so far. Um, good stuff. Uh, yeah, good stuff. I yeah. I'll give this deck a, a real a real solid seven point uh, a real solid seven or seven point five um, and a real solid five um, five peppers. Yeah, I'll give it five Although, peppers. I, I don't I don't have a slot for that because for posterity I am leaving my rating initial deck list you can um, just make a clone of it yeah, no worries um <laughs> thank, thank you very much all right uh <laughs> oh, oh seven and what have you um oof. you could you couldn't ask for a better injection of content could you um yeah okay so the next deck is uh toasties <laughs> this is somebody once animator. told me uh okay yeah it's a very uh, straightforward cheat <laughs> deck Oh, it's just uh, it's just uh, Eureka Tell. Um, it's Eureka Tell with Springtime. With uh, with Springtime, but most notably Eureka Tell with Crateri Restoration as a method by which to both ramp and sort of act as a Eureka spell. No, you're never gonna get to enough mana to cast those things even off the Restoration. No, you. This deck does do that. Do you have the right mana colors. Yes. Um, this deck did that before all of that, but um, yes, this deck can be casting Villiers and Cranes and Azos's, which is strong, although I think, uh, unfortunately, Prateri suffers from your opponent getting the first crack at it. Um, yeah. <clears throat> but, um, yeah, but hey, no, this if, deck is classic solid deck. I mean, if your opponent can't really interact with your hand, then it, it's fine if your opponent gets a bunch of mana. After but, that is... Mm. I was just oh, also seven point five two pepper. Um, I was just double checking the uh, sideboard here, but nothing this is just there. Kalen, but with barks in it. Uh, wait, what? And with, this this is Kalen, but with barks and Setos on. Uh, uh you see up to forward one. Hister is uh, uh, doing chariot. Oh yeah, hits oh, this deck right. I I oh, remember seeing it. No, this is a this is a different chariot deck actually. This is um. This deck is straight red white um, and is playing a number of suspect cards um, like Fidelity of the Pure. Um, but ultimate, I, and I also don't think this deck quite has enough ways to produce tokens. Um, it's just self replication and um, hope spot. and yeah, and hope spot, which are not, which is not enough, um, not nearly. Um, hmm. Chronicles also counts, but. It makes token singular. Yeah. I said tokens. So, do you think it's just a, it's a less good version of the Naya version of the stack? Yes, I am inclined to say yes. I mean, what do you get from cutting the green? <laughs> Nothing. I guess your mass um, slightly so, better. Mm, kind of, I guess, but uh, the, you also are. They cut a lot of the good red and white cards from it as well. Um, 
seems. I don't quite understand that. Um, like the 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 something of the fair prince, whatever, uh, is a very powerful card that is in these colors. But I feel like this deck does not have enough Should ways have to print. put tokens onto the path. Yeah, is my is my big thing with it. I think it can win games, right? But I think it will likely, you know. Yeah. All right. I'll give it a. Be worse at winning games than counterparts. Uh, well, props for building around Chariot. Uh, I yeah, I think Chariot's a really really powerful card. Yeah. I was wondering when we were going to see one of those because there was a bit of a hub about Chariot. It had a it had a bit of an oversight infinite loop within it that got fixed. Of course, it could just there was some ambiguity about how crewing was defined, and by a certain definition, you could interpret it as just untapping any number of creatures crewing it as many times as needed. Yeah. But even on a, even without that, the card's a two mana anthem. Of so sorts, that is also a also three two. Body. And yeah. that's incredible. It is this card's great. Um someone matched a uh, uh did they five oh league with a Naya version of this deck? Yeah, Hid Hidster, the same person. Um which is why part partially why I'm so confused why this well, deck is maybe worse. it is better, um, but like because they're the ones that is it they're the one that Five old league with it, so maybe they know something yeah, that we don't. But I sort of doubt it. Yeah, we'll see how it performs. Um, maybe, maybe just the raw power of this many one mana tokens, like with Katsune plus the Goblin Chariot. Maybe that's all you need. Maybe. Maybe. Um, okay, moving on. But there... Based on my experience, you need quite a lot of ways to make two tokens for one card with Chariot. Mm -hmm. So Wizardness is Kalen plus Barks. Hey, it's a deck that they won the GP with like two years ago or something. Is it two years or is it one year? I forgot. Well, whatever. It's not like time passes, anyways. No, it doesn't. Uh, this this stream actually takes place inside of a time dilated bubble. Um, powered by me. Thank you. Uh, it, it powered by sort of burn math. Uh, <laughs> we're actually inside the Stat Trek hypergeometric calculator right now. Um, um, so now we're trying to calculate how well this deck will do. Yeah, so this um, deck, is it the exact same? Of course no, not. It's new cards. Uh, yeah, there are, uh, there is Barks, there is Arrive. There's, there's Barks, which is an, unique from other Kalen decks, and unique from the other, the other version of this deck is Arrive, surrounded by Petals, and Judge's Decree, and Ayala's Concord. Yeah, um, so Ayala's Concord fetches out Kalen or Judge's Decree. Or Setosan. Oh yeah, that um, too. I think the implementation of Dawnhill Forge. I think Dawnhill Forge Master is a little underbaked in this deck. I think they have not gone in enough to justify it for me, because uh, this deck already has a lot to do with its mana. And currently, they're just doing the Dawnhill Forge Master one, two, three lines, which I, I'm not they excited have, about. What they have, Rod the Mostly Bubble Rose. Pieces overlap with Setosan, I believe. Um, yeah, their pieces overlap with Setosan. But I think they're playing two Setosan and four Forge Master when I would be playing four Setosan and two Forge Master. At are best. they not playing Death Pits Trophy? No, they are not. Because uh, so. it's not, which they for sure should be. Yeah, they can um, easily splash that, I think. No, very easily. Um, Shiono Shio is interesting. I'm, I've never actually played against this card when it's gotten to flip, if I'm going to be honest. I don't think you need to flip it. You just stick this onto Kaelin and then start swinging with a Hexproof. Flying, um, Fl flying well, yes, I'm just, like, what I'm saying is mostly that Shion or Shio gets got before it can yeah. get to swing. Um, but yes, uh, anyway, so anyway. Uh, there are two Kalen decks in a row there. Well, so something interesting about Kalen plus Barks is that you can use Barks to exile something and then use Kalen to pick it up during your opponent's turn so that you can get an artifact ETB during your opponent's turn. Yep. That, that's why I'm really surprised about Barks. not running Death Pit Trophy, because then you can try to draw a step block your opponent that way. Uh, yeah, which is which is something I was doing in uh, the other deck. Um, yeah. Which, it, yeah, it's something I was doing in Esper Kalen deck that I was playing, um, which uh, was very powerful. Draw step blocking people is strong. Uh, I think it is just less unfair than these Kalen decks at the moment. It's much yeah, more of a sort of fair, grindy greed pile, uh, which... You know, if they hit Blossoming Expanse and Judge's Decree and not uh, Kaelin, then I would be happy as a clam, um, because then that deck would get to survive. But if it doesn't, fair game. Um, yeah. Okay, so... And then there's regular Kaelin again, which we've discussed. 
Is it the exact same? Yeah, yeah, it seems like it's it. It's exactly the same as one of the other lists, yeah. Cool, let's move on. Uh, well, we have Space Princess. That's what yeah, Spaceless with... Princess to be exact. Uh, this no longer runs Thunder Road, I believe. Because Thunder oh. Road's got nerfed. <laughs> because Thunder Road is marginally weaker now, and that you can no longer do a three-for-one on your opponent's turn. Well, yes, but this deck, to be fair, does very specifically want to play at instant speed. Yes. Though, I think that dropping Thunder Roads after such a small nerf, comparatively, is kind of a mistake. I don't... Like Thunder I, Road, for God's sake. I think Thunder Road probably could have moved to the sideboard instead of being cut. Uh, oh. Just because it's it's less good as a straightforward burn spell in this deck now, uh, and better as a creature hoser. Uh-huh. Yeah. But uh, what this deck has gained in the meanwhile... It's put a Paul also. It, yes, it's it's inserted Paul, um, which we've discussed the merits of previously, um, and it has uh, slotted in more copies of its Planeswalkers. More, I believe it was only on two Ajani, and now is now it is on uh, three copies of Ajani the White Buddhist and three copies of Paul of Rock Bottom, um, which are you know yeah. is uh, I think Ajani Enlightened is a very very um, I think it is slightly less silly without Thunder Road in the deck. It's still a sort of free bit of life gain and late game, since you can untap for your interaction to cover your ass. Yes. Hard to straightforwardly good. Yeah. Just uh, the untapping can no longer chain into a uh, road quite okay, easily. Okay, uh, Toast just won, a, won against Captain Johnny, if that matters at all. Congratulations, Toasty. Yeah. So that's Eureka Tell wins against uh where's Captain Johnny? This isn't sort of an alphabetical order. I, I can't uh, find up. people. Uh hold up. What? Uh oh, against oh, dragons. You, it, it, it lost. Oh, oh okay. It, yeah, so So it looks like Eureka Tell lost against Reanimator Tell. And uh Dragons um lost against the other dragons. <laughs> no, <laughs> lost against the it was I'm gonna still... blame Ricky for this. It's well, just... yeah. This has nothing to do with Toasty. Yeah. Sorry, dragons Toasty. lost against Gearadris, um, which means that the Dragons deck was beaten by the Dragons deck. Um, uh, yeah. But I mean two extremely different decks uh, when I say that. Um, anyway. Yeah, let's move um, uh... Oh, also, this deck doesn't actually have a Yuri in the sideboard, um, which is uh, unusual. Yeah, the Yuri styles. thing here yeah. is just... I don't but, know no, what's I'm... going on. Here. I'm saying it's unusual, it's unusual for Styles to not put a Yuri in the sideboard to promo. Um, what we have? Excuse me. Nin <clears throat> What's happening? We have ninjas by Zangi. Hey, gotten... is it ninjas? Yes, it is ninjas. Yes, we have actual ninjas. We've got Shin right here and everything. We got Kalen um, in ninjas. Uh, it, yes, uh, because Kalen does the ninjas thing very well. Um, now uh, this deck has an upgrade, which is Royal Doctor. Um, which is a b oh, it has two upgrades: Royal Doctor and Backstage comic, which is a slight upgrade over the previous Relentless Rats this deck was playing. Um, but uh, Royal Doctor is a threat. Um, I think this deck is powerful. I think this deck has very powerful value loops it can, it can play. I think this deck is more threatening than it's ever been. Yeah, I think it... the implementation of Profane Emissary uh, is good and correct. I think the implementation of Kaelin is good and correct. Um, I think Royal Doctor gives you a level of pressure that you were lacking sometimes. Um, I, I am not exactly sure on the correctness of moving away. You only have one backstage comment. Oh, you're, you're cutting yeah, out. Okay, you, could we get a quick repeat of what you're not sure about moving away you, from? You might want to reconnect. Oh, I'm, I'm not sure about moving away from the, uh, the draw step lock aspect of this deck because there is only one copy of backstage comic in this deck as opposed to the two or three that you would usually see yeah. of a similar Got effect. It. Um, I'm not sure how much that's going to matter, uh, given the void portals and given that the the, the d deck has become significantly more aggressive. Um, right? It is it is no longer sort of just trying to grind your opponent to dust. Like you are playing a, a number of threats that can beat your opponent to death. Um, yes. but maybe in intervals of four. Maybe giving your maybe giving your up your draw step lock is is going to matter. Uh, and I would like to know if it does or does not. All right. I'm uh, I'm impressed with the deck. I think I'm, I'm impressed nice with the deck on the Kalen craze. I think I also think Ninjas is 
Um, very strong. I think ninjas is a very strong archetype. Um, I think mostly that uh, ninjas is a very strong archetype off of the back of uh, Grandma Suzume, whatever the name of the card is. Uh, Suzume the, Arashoko? Uh, uh, yeah, uh, Suzume Arashoko. Uh, yeah, is um, a very powerful card. Um, I think it's I think it's very very difficult. It it makes it very difficult to interact with anything but it in a similar way to Kalen. And Kalen does the same thing. So playing Kalen in the deck is natural. I also think this deck weirdly likes having Profane Emissary into Jejun as an option. Yeah, like because it gives it a big flying beater. Yeah, and this again, this deck is is much more aggressive already. Okay, I think we've said about all that there needs to be said about the Ninja's deck. Oh, yep. Cyber. Uh, Sai. Sai was workshopping this right up until the last minute. It is another Salome deck, or Salome. I'm sorry, Zangi, I should have asked you sooner. Hmm? Is it Salome or Salome? Uh, I don't know. Well, Zang's um... in chat right now. Zang, is it Salome or uh, Salome? <laughs> well, anyways, let's continue talking Sylvester about Salome. Um. So this is... Mostly, I'm going to include Psy and the Anti-Greed Squad, because I had conferred with them a bit about building control uh, functional density. You'll notice that this deck is packing a ton of interaction. It's mainboarding stance, it's mainboarding rift splicing, it's even mainboarding celestial banishment. Yeah, it is boy copies. Out. It is out for blood, for all the meta options we've seen so far. Kaelin, uh, the recent variations of Burn, all that is taken into consideration. This is the sideboard and main board. It's even got rot. Multiple copies. So this, uh, similar to Pip's deck, is mostly looking to stall until Salome can come in and finish off the game with uh, instant speed wipes. Yeah. As for the actual win condition, that seems to mostly be seems to mostly be revelations. Yeah. And no, the land. This, this deck seems very very strong um it is less flexible than pip's list but uh in exchange is sort of playing more main deck rots um i'm kind of low on main deck stand unassailable but uh i am also not a control player so i don't think i can fully comment um yeah uh powerful deck don't want to be um, that event. i'm not certain but i respect the hustle of putting the sideboard to main board more or less there was a brief discussion, actually, when I was conferring with Sai on what the villainy deck should look like. We had wondered for a moment if it was worth putting Stand Unassailable in the main board. Your villainy, uh, no. Ultimately, I went against it, but uh, Sai, you can see here, decided to go with Stands in the main board. Yeah. Well, it, thankfully, anyway. it's a win condition, technically. <laughs> just like every other revelation. Revelations are just automatically three-for-ones by their very nature. Yeah. So oh, the bad news is you can get redoubted to an extent. Um, Praxis is another good option in that vein. Um. Anyway, we have another sort of suspect-looking combo deck. Um, hey, like it's Chiara. Chiara um, plus yeah. Seek the Maker's Egg. Yeah, uh, we have the Steward of Empire's Cradle Seek the Maker's Egg interaction, which has been nerfed to no longer mill your entire deck. Um, but in exchange... Uh, or not in exchange, just unrelated. This deck is playing Kiara, um, and is instead just trying to put rule the world and polytheism into play. Um, but I, I'm going to be honest. I don't think these targets are it. I don't think think these targets actually are very good or worth the uh, potential redoubt losses that you're taking on by playing a uh, sort of reanimation strategy. Yeah, with egg. But if you were to replace the target. Uh, what would you? If I were to replace it, well, for one thing, I would probably make this deck less all in if I were to build it, because I think very easy to build a seek the maker's egg list that is trying to do unfair yeah. things with it. That is also that also has a fair plan, right? Um, okay. Uh, and as such, one of those one of those is one of the targets is always going to be to me observer because observer is a card you can cast fairly, right? But you can also sort of just put it into play for three mana with seek, and that is very strong. Um, I think polytheism is significantly better than rule the world. If I'm honest, I don't. I'm not. I'm not super super high on rule the world. Um, I think other other options include uh, you could play artificer's gift and the artific artificer's gift target head of Uko, right? Um, as a as a potential target. I, I also think if you are willing to play an uncastable target, right? I think that head of Uko sort of fell out of favor at one point. 
Some people start being a bit lower on it. Yeah, it's, but it I is think a bit slow. It is a bit slow. No, I agree. Um, and I think I think this deck actually weirdly would benefit from um, playing Eminent Extraction Engine as a uh, as a Artificer's Gift or, or rather a, a graveyard based Artificer's Gift deck that is hypothetically extant uh, would benefit from Eminent Extraction Engine as displayed earlier. Yeah. Uh, it would also benefit potentially from. Um, I'm sorry, I am blanking on names right now. Uh, there, uh, okay. Uh, oh yeah, Dredgeline Colossus. If you want right. a, if you want an uncastable target, Dredgeline Colossus is a pretty decent one. Although it doesn't win the game as fast as I would maybe like. Um, although honestly, if I were to build this right, if I were to build this, I would probably play significantly more conservatively. Uh, insofar as my targets would be Seismic Colossus and Observer, more than likely. Okay. Uh, but again. I think mostly that that currently the uh, the polytheism kills are cool, right? But the uh, but rule the world I'm just so low on, right? I think I've seen it in in um, in Eureka Tell as well. I just don't. I've never lost to it yet, though. That's more an indication of how I need to play more games. It's think... always been a card that the way it's written has concerned me. It is very intimidating. It's an intimidating card. I also think, unfortunately, what it does is non loses, not win. Joe, you're cutting out again. It non loses. It does not win. Is my big issue. Mm -hmm. Sure, I, I guess. And I, I, I am not a fan of reanimation targets that non lose. If that makes sense. Hmm. Um, I would prefer reanimation targets that win. I see. I don't play reanimator all that much, so uh, I trust. Yeah, you. I think. For example, an Azos, which you can't play off of Seek, but you get the idea, wins uh, by proactively dismantling your opponent's game plan and leaving you with a large body. This just dismantles your opponent's game plan and leaves you with turns. All the time in the world and nothing to do with it. Yeah, and all the time in the, also all the time in the world for your opponent to find a disenchant. <laughs> right? Yeah. Um, yeah, that is true. Yeah, I yeah. think it's fine. Give I think I'll give it three chili peppers. Like, it might be interesting to watch. 5.5, I'd say, at the uh, moment. 5.5 or 6. Uh, also, like, fill in Cyber's deck, and we're done, I guess. And we're done. A smaller yeah. GP than, than the previous one. Still took um, two and a half hours. Still took two and a half hours. Um, it's part, part of it is that we spent about 10 minutes talking about dragons and about 10 minutes talking about Kaelin. Um, and then five minutes talking about Crimson Curtain Favored. Uh, yeah, and then about uh, five minutes losing our shit about uh, negative one Dara champion. Um, yeah. All of which I think were reasoned uses of time. But uh, yeah, I think that is a complete decklist stream. Yeah, and if there's nothing well, else to talk about. Gonna look like? Well, I, mean, I feel like the killing deck is probably going to get at least one top eight just by sheer numbers. I mean, I don't, I don't like predicting who's going to be in top X or top, or who's going to win because I think it uh, just sort of happens. Yeah. At random. No, I don't think. I'm not thinking along those lines. I'm more but, thinking about not at random, but you get generally how some decks will interact. I think if you're thinking about matchups, I think that we are going to see a lot of people figuring out how much of a head Kalen Mirror is. Um, we are going to see a lot of people figuring out. Um, whether or not they can position themselves correctly as the beatdown against Kaylin in a way that is fast enough. Yeah. Um, and we're going to see a lot of people losing to Kaylin. Uh, <laughs> although one of the Kaylin players has been bumped down to uh, X1, um, there still are three remaining, or three or four? Uh, we counted four Kaylin decks total, I think. Um, yeah. Why aren't there We have... Um, we, okay, so we have Kaylin, Kaylin... Ninjas, which is also playing Kaelin, so I kind of half of a Kaelin. Kaelin, Hersey's deck, which is also playing Kaelin, so it's half of it. So I say four if you count half Kaelin. No, okay, oh, three five Kaelins and Kaelin. two quasi Kaelins. Yes. Yeah. Um, so the four Kaelins, if you count the quasi Kaelins, is half. Five if you count them as one. Um, mm -hmm. Well, <laughs> may the best Kaelin win, I suppose. Uh, yeah. And goodbye. Yeah, and with that, uh, thanks for watching, guys. Shout out to the anti-grease squad. Ew. Let's get them.